coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. The Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world, from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. and South America. You're a part of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Joining us from Trinity Christian City International in Costa Mesa, California are founding pastor of World Outreach Center in Orlando, Florida, Pastor Benny Hinn. Pastor of Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church of Los Angeles, California, Pastor E.B. Hill. Ministry of Music, world-renowned musical evangelist, Steve Braun. To make your calls, prayer partners from around America. of the Trinity Broadcasting Network, Paul and James Hall. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hello, everybody. Coast to coast, shore to shore, border to border, and around the world. It is time to... Whoa, are we going to have a live wire on fire amen corner tonight. Can you say amen? Amen. You will do just fine. You know what? We have so many wonderful things to do. You saw Benny Hinn, our buddy, is here. Oh, we're going to have a great, I'm sure, a healing service. Pastor Hill, one of the great pastors of a great historic church, South Central Los Angeles, Mount Zion Missionary Baptist. How do you beat a name like that? <laughs> Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. And Steve Brock, who can sing like Steve? In fact, Brethren, please come join Jan and me. We're going to read a, little, read a little word from the Word. And I have two little things I want to share with you, a couple of things to pray about. Hello, Benny Hinn. Hello, Paul. How are you? <laughs> and hello, Pastor E.V. Hill. Hello there. How are you? I am well, sir. You brought your peach and Bible with you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. We're going to say a special prayer for someone very special. Hello, Steve Brock. Hey, Dr. Paul. How are you, sir? We're going to sing me a happy song. Where have you been? You've picked up an accent. I, I feel like I've been around the world. I'm going again. Amen. <laughs> He's crazy, but we love him anyway. I have two letters I'm going to read. One is one that we're going to gratefully receive and also pray for the person. It reached us a little late for the week of 25th anniversary, but this is our 25th anniversary year. So we finally got a letter from the White House. President Bill Clinton sent me a lovely letter the other day, and whether you agree with all of his policies or all of the things in Washington or not, hey, we are still commanded, are we not, to pray for our leaders, those in authority over us. I'll tell you, right now, President Clinton needs our prayers, does he not? perhaps more than at any other time in his life. And the other night, I'll tell you this quick little story. Mark Sharona, honey, you remember, preached that marvelous message in which he gave a word of exhortation and blessing to President Clinton, assured him that the true body of Christ is praying for him. And you know what I did? I wrote Mr. Clinton a nice letter, and I clipped out, and I made a videotape of that portion, a good portion of that sermon and send it to him through some channels that I believe will really reach him. We hope so anyway. If the Lord wants him to get it, he'll get it. Okay. But anyhow, this is dated July the 24th and it's to really all of us at Trinity Broadcasting. It just says, congratulations to the staff of the Trinity Broadcasting Network as you celebrate your 25th anniversary. Over the past half century, television stations have changed the way we think about the world. TBN is an important part of this tradition, giving citizens immediate access to the events that shape our times and offering a spiritual perspective. 
providing a pulpit for some of our nation's most respected religious leaders, as well as bringing inspiration and hope to your audience. Your network reflects the vibrant religious heritage of our country. TBN's longevity is a tribute to the staff and viewers who have supported it since 1973. Best wishes for a wonderful anniversary year, Bill Clinton. Amen. <clears throat> and as we pray in just a moment, let's do lift our president to God in prayer and pray that God will give him wisdom, knowledge, understanding, comfort, strength as he leads our nation. I want to tell you something. Whoever's in that White House, God allowed it. Whether you like whoever's in the White House or not, whether you're Republican, Democrat, Dixiecrat, nothing crat. Hey, God rules and reigns in this world. And don't you forget it, devil. Or what? No, no, full of crat. Amen. Whoa. <laughs> I should not have asked that. This letter will prove there is a God in heaven. And, and, and get, get ready to shout because I read this on behind the scenes. Some of you heard this. But this is from Sharon Burns from Wise, Virginia. And it's so cute. I tell you, I was under the table when I read this. It is, it is so sweet. It says, Dear Paul and Jan and all of I watch your TV and broadcasting regularly. I'm so blessed as it uh, blesses everyone in my area. I made a pledge, and she tells me a little story. She's pledging $1,000 and so forth. But here's the story. Now, as Paul Harvey says, for the rest of the story. Just a note to say that in my hometown, our TV cable, Century Communications, didn't want to carry or broadcast TBN on our cable system anymore. Our church prayed and it stayed on for a time. Then they tried to switch it out or switch it off twice. But both times, lightning struck their antenna and switched it back to TBN automatically. Can you believe this? Twice. Finally, the TV cable company called and said, you win. This has to be God. <laughs> you know what? Bob Higley, if you're, I want this to go in our cable ads. Uh, in all the trade journals. I'm serious. We're going to reprint this in the cable ads. And maybe all the cable something say, well, we don't want to get hit by lightning and whatever. Anyhow, that blessed me. I will frame that letter, dear friends. I will never, never cease to be blessed by that. Well, let's ask the Lord uh, to bless us. Uh, Jan, honey, just a little word from the Word before we pray. I bless the holy name of God with all my heart. Yes, I will bless the Lord, and I will not forget the glorious thing that he does for me. He forgives all of my sins. <laughs> he heals me and he ransoms me from hell and he surrounds me with the loving kindness and tender mercies and he fills my life with good things. He's merciful and tender toward those of us who don't even deserve it. And he's slow to get angry and full of kindness and love. He never bears a grudge or remains angry forever. And he has not punished me as I deserve for my sins. For his mercy toward those who fear and honor him is as great as the height of the heavens is above the earth. And he has removed my sins as far away as the east Glory is praise. from the west.
request. Psalm 103. Hallelujah. Is that good news or what? Amen, amen, amen. Well, those of you watching right now, this will be our last Macedonian call. It was over really last week, but so many called and said I couldn't get through on the phone. Benny's coming and promised to lay hands on and pray over all the prayer requests, praise reports, salvation reports, pledge slips. This will be your last opportunity to receive Paul the Emissary, this great Macedonian call film. And uh, so get on the phone right now, make your final calls and pledges. But let's agree right now that this will be a great night of victory. I asked a little earlier, Benny, how many in this room need a definite healing touch in your body? Wave at me, please. Keep waving for just a moment, please. Look at that. We are a needy people. I'm asking special prayer for my little sweetheart, Jan. She's been suffering with high blood pressure, and that's a very serious thing if it's not dealt with in a timely manner. I want a healing word for sweet Jan tonight as well. Benny, lead us. Dearest Lord, thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your power and grace. And Lord, we ask tonight especially that you will move mightily healing your people. Dear Lord, send a mighty wave of the miraculous. And we do pray tonight, dear Lord, everyone, not only watching, but everyone in this audience will be healed. Touch Jane tonight. Heal her body. Drive sickness away, we pray, from each one. And we will give you the glory. Amen. And all the church said, Amen. Amen. Well, Steve Brock, can you get our little song service going here? And in a little bit, we'll have a time, I'm sure, when all of us can join in with some wonderful praise and worship choruses as Brother Benny Hinn comes in a little bit after Pastor Hill has opened the Word and leads us in a great service, however the Holy Spirit wants to move. Amen? Amen. We're ready for whatever the Spirit of God wants to do tonight. Amen, Steve Rock? Let's sing it with him right now. The victory of the Lamb. Welcome, Brother Steve Brock. Why don't you just stand with me and clap your hands and sing along. Come on, everybody. This is a foot stomping song. We are ransomed, we're redeemed, we are rejoicing in the Lord. Son of God, defeated Satan's plan. We're delivered, we are healed. We're covered by the blood. We possess the victory of the Lamb. How many believe that tonight? Shout yet. Yeah. Every Christian knows the devil's a liar gonna tell you anything to keep you bowed but the truth is his deceptions have no power so let's boldly stand shout that devil down we are ransomed we're redeemed we are rejoicing in the lord by the son of god defeated satan's plan we're delivered we are healed we're covered by the blood we possess the victory of the Lamb. Oh, yeah. Listen now. When those evil powers come to rage against you and me, they long to try and test our faith. They're going to run, they're going to flee when we call on Jesus. So let's lift his name. Oh, I'm The victory of the land. Yeah. You believe it? Shout praise the Lord. I believe it. We are ransomed. We're redeemed. We are rejoicing in the Lord. By the Son of God, defeated Satan's plan. We're delivered. We are healed. We're covered by the blood. For we possess the victory of the land. Listen now. by the blood we possess the victory of the land
Steve Brock. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. We are going to have music tonight. Yes, we are. Bless. And uh, will, you, will you sing my song yes, sometime sir. before the night is over? Lately, I got leave it yes, on sir. my mind. Yes, sir. You know, you haven't done the church triumphant for a long time either. Boy, that's a good one, too. Okay. Oh, <laughs> he's just very <laughs> amicable tonight. <laughs> and, of course, oh, blessed hope, how do you get any better than that? We might even take some requests from you tonight if you all would like to make a request. But first of all, I want to say a great big hello and welcome to a part of this great, big, beautiful TDN family. He's not been a guest for many years. He is family. Amen. Let's tell our pastor, E.V. Hill, Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. We love him. Amen. Welcome, Thank welcome, you. welcome. And uh, before you give us a little update report on Zion and uh, the, the Lord's Kitchen and, and some of the other good stuff that goes on up in L.A., Jan got a very special letter, and I have to apologize. We're a little tardy in getting this to you, but a strange thing happened. Mm -hmm. This dear lady left us in her will a house. Quick deeded it. And then just disappeared, and we couldn't find her anywhere. I don't know if she passed away. I don't know if she went to a foreign country or whatever, but she didn't really fill the papers out right. We had to go through the court. We had to get a judge's declaration to get the quick claim deed. And finally, 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 we sold the house for $172,000 uh, or thereabouts. And now this was the letter that came and it's really actually addressed to Jan. To me. Dear, dear Jan. <clears throat> it says, Dear Jan, Trinity Broadcasting Network, Santa Ana. It says, Dear Jan, can't hear me? My mic. Oh, thank you for letting everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for not just sitting there, but saying, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Okay. It says, Dear Jan, I am giving TBN this home in Glendale, California. I give this house wanting you to be the person who ultimately makes the decisions. I want funds and proceeds to be used as follows. She gives us one, and then number two, direct practical help for the young women with Pastor Hill, the ones whom Pastor Hill is helping in memory of his late wife. Mm. Tangible things to restore them and get them strong enough to cope with what is ahead. And the tangible things that make that possible. And then she gives us one more, number three, and that will be someone coming in the near future, but says, um, all are to be ministered to in His name and the quality of their lives improved. Thank you, Jan. With many thanks for Trinity Broadcasting and you and Paul, Mrs. M-A-N-I-S. And then the deed was enclosed. And here's a copy of the deed that she had, um, uh, what do you call it? Quit Quick but, claim deeded to she Jan didn't, Crouch. She didn't do it right, <laughs> yeah, and we had to go through the court, it. and, and <laughs> the lawyers had to have a heyday. <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, part of it was to go to help the pitiful ladies in Bosnia. Yeah, so I've, we're going to give part got, of this to Franklin Graham, Graham, and part of it to Pastor Hill, and part of it to, to TV. TV. We decided to split it three ways. Okay? She didn't really tell us how to divide it, but we thought, how can you be... A third, a third, a third. Now, Pastor, this is a little more than a third because there was some other funds for the Lord's Kitchen. So it is with the greatest joy that I hand to Pastor E.V. Hill a check for $50,000 wow. for Mount Lord and the great work up there. And don't thank us. Thank the Lord and the dear lady who... I don't know where she is. She, she's either in heaven or Praise God. off somewhere. <laughs> my, my, my. What Isn't that beautiful? Do you say? And um, let me just simply say that it's because of uh, Trinity that she would even know I was out there. Yeah. And Praise I want to thank you Amen. because we announced it right here on this program that um, I was, um, I met this lady. Uh, she came to church and she had one of these bands. Uh, that she had just been in the hospital Sunday morning. And when she came down, I said, uh, you just got out of the hospital? She said, this morning. 
I said, what was wrong? She said, I had a baby. She said, when? Yesterday. Mercy. And so I called some ladies. I said, come quickly, come quickly. <laughs> and uh, the problem we have, many women are, are hearing us when they say no abortion. But then they go in, they have no place to lay their head. Many homeless women are not having abortions. They go in on Monday and the hospital wants them out Tuesday. Yeah. My goodness. And they give them one bottle of milk, wow. one blanket, and one box of uh, Pampers. And they have nowhere to lay their head. My God. It's generally at that time that they go back in the hospital and give up the baby. So that's when, and it's been, and I'm going to get to a bit, the miracle of it. It's been three and a half years ago when I announced here that the Lord laid on my heart to build a home uh, that would... Um, be a place where any woman with an infant, not women with children, I mean, but just out of the hospital could come and have 18 weeks. Uh, four weeks, I have written a program. <laughs> Rest. <laughs> Good. My mama said that uh, you're supposed to stay in bed six weeks after you have a baby. <laughs> so I have, I've compromised with four. I know they're out in four days, but I want four weeks rest. Yeah. Yes. And then we'll have 14 more weeks of Christian counseling, mm -hmm. job development, wonderful decision, oh, where hey, they go. Hey, hey, hey. That is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and it will be a model that we can model throughout the country. But Jan, it is amazing how demonic mm. our world is. Mm. That has been, it's been three and a half years. That has been one program that has sent me through hell. Yeah. They, that the devil has fought me every step of the way. Of but guess what? Just last week, final papers, final everything. <laughs> this week is the walkthrough mm -hmm. of everybody who could criticize something. <laughs> and within two weeks, we will start the actual remodeling mm -hmm. where we'll have 41, 41 bedrooms mm -hmm. and um, to take care of these girls, six, 18 oh, weeks. Man. And then down below, we'll have everything from a place to get your hair done to a nursery while others are out hunting for jobs. They can keep the babies there. And then this comes along. <laughs> hey, um, just, the Lord's timing is good, isn't it? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And then, then your check comes along for the Lord's Kitchen because as of uh, uh, August, no, July 1, Thousands multiplied by thousands mm. of people in L.A. County uh, on general relief were put off. Mm. And so now we have people just roaming the streets that have no, not only no place to stay, but nothing to eat. Mm. So they headed to the Lord's Kitchen. They, they cut back general relief. There was a time if you didn't have nothing to eat, no place to live, you could go and get, uh, I think it's about $250, $300 a month until you find a job. Well, for the most part, most of that's out now. And so this comes along at that time. So I'm very grateful. And on behalf of the people, uh, thank you, Lord. Amen. <laughs> thank the and Lord. thank that angel Amen. wherever she is. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 I just want to say how, how wonderful that this little lady yes. who had no other family wow. yeah. and had and was just watching TBN and enough trust in us that yes. what she wished in her will, sometimes you can't depend on your own children That's right. to do something That's this true. wonderful, but she knew that TBN would do it. And Pastor Hill, you have $50,000. This little lady's in heaven. She doesn't need her house down here anymore. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be used, the money's going to be used to house these precious, precious, Amen. precious women. Hallelujah. And I love that. And Praise the, God. the gift goes on. Amen. <laughs> this isn't all of the gift that you will see about a TV. And not only that, but I, I do want to say, and I'm, I'm not trying to um, butter you up or anything, but I, I do want to say it to both you and Paul, because sometimes you only hear the critical letters of what was not yeah. said and what happened. Yeah. But I do want to say that you, 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 the Lord has given you that, that reputation that if we can get it to TBN, yeah. it'll, it'll be handled go, right. 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 It'll go to and uh, God has done that. And I want to thank you for letting the Lord be that way with you because uh, this, not only this nation, but this world trusts you. 
Yes, they do. And, uh, and, and, and God bless you. Amen. I was God in Tonga. <laughs> I was in Tonga, and, and, and here we go again. Oh, yeah. There's Jan and Paul's we're friend. I know, we're <laughs> all down there. Oh, they've, they've the seen king, you down there. The no, no, I huh? was there for the king's yeah. birthday. Oh, and uh, he's uh, the first of uh, July. July 4th is his birthday. Oh. Just this year. He, this year, and they had a national prayer breakfast where uh, all of the villages of the kingdom and 52 countries were represented mm. by Queen's Kings Ambassador. My and they invited me down to preach the prayer breakfast. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, again, when I got off the plane, they said, Jan and Paul's friend. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Lord. And the king sent his regards oh, because yeah. he was on program here. A couple of times. Twice. Yes. Yeah. Well, he doesn't weigh as much as he used to weigh. Really? He's lost a little weight. He's riding his bicycle at 80 years old. Oh, and uh, yeah, of yeah. course, the army runs along beside him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we had a great time with him. My wife and, uh, you know, I'm picking into all cotton because when they called me to come, they said, now, how many of your staff do you have to bring? So <laughs> I took my secretary, Letha, and Paul, well, and uh, I, t I, you know, I fell in line. You know. <laughs> A little entourage. Yeah. Entourage yeah. of 12 so, or 15. Uh, no, we, we own very loud in Tonga. <laughs> and that's, uh, for that's those right. who may not know, that's about three hours from uh, Australia. Uh -huh. So we own down there the wow. Queen of New Zealand. Wow. All of them were there for the prayer breakfast. Wow. And I preached prayer breakfast, and it was carried by television from the Philippines to in Indonesia. Praise the Lord. So it was, well, it was a big fair. You fad. know, the, the king himself is a preacher, you know. Uh, he preached that Sunday morning. Yeah, oh, he yeah, is. He a preached that Sunday morning. Strong Christian. They call, oh, yes. And there are more churches in Tonga per square mile than anywhere in the world. Man. Fantastic. Not only the hospital is open on Sundays, and you have to be, it has to be an emergency. Sunday is the Lord's day in Tonga. Wow. All right. Yeah. Oh, Nothing oh, else. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you for that wonderful report, Pastor Hill. And of course, as always, take our best love to Mount Zion and all the wonderful friends oh, up there. Praise. We love them. Wish we could drop in on you every once in a while, but well, we understand. With 788 TV Amen. stations around the world. Hello. Amen. It takes a little doing from time to time. So about the best we can do is have you tell the wonderful folks at, at Zion how much we do love them and, appre and appreciate them sharing you with us. Just about any time we call, as a matter of fact, Pastor Hill is always there. I always love to tell one quick little story, and then are you ready to sing my, yes, my song, Brother Steve? One? Yes, sir. Which one? Well, they've got, lately I got leaving on my mind. Up there. You want that That's or good. Church Triumph? We'll do them all. We'll do them all. <laughs> Many of you have heard this little story, but of course, uh, I love to tell it because there's always a... We're, we're on in New York City now from ah, 5 to yes. 7 a.m. every wow. morning. That's tell amazing. everybody in New York City, Channel 63. We've got 54 up in Poughkeepsie, you yeah. know, and, and yeah. I know a lot of you are watching up in Poughkeepsie, the Hudson River Valley, yeah. but now... Downtown the Big Apple, New York City, Channel 63. It's a little early, 5 to 7 a.m. But they're getting ready to go to work. Yeah. Many yeah. are watching, yeah. and some put right. their videotape recorders on tape it, and then yeah. they watch it in the evening or whenever they want. But anyhow, tell everybody in New York City that we're on the air. The, li the Praise the Lord program, not live, but it comes a day late, a, a tape. This will be on tomorrow. day after tomorrow morning, I think. Anyhow. When Pastor Hill was led of the Lord to open this wonderful center, <laughs> how many years ago, this feeding center? We're headed to our 13th year. 13 years. Boy. Feeds how many a week? Uh, we, we're doing right now from 1,500 to 2,500. A week. Yeah. A and week. We, feeds them. We, we get no funds other than from the believers. We don't get state, federal, and county funds. Good. Uh, uh, <laughs> there was a federal agent that came in and wanted to uh, let us buy food at a greatly reduced price. And so we really got happy about it because we could have saved literally thousands of dollars. But, but then he came back and said, but now there's a sign that you have to take down. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, which one? I thought it was an exit sign or something, you know. <laughs> and we have up over the food, welcome in the name of Jesus. And he said, now you have to take that down. No, sir. I said, no, <laughs> before I met you, the name of Jesus opened this place. <laughs> Yes. Since I've opened it, we've served a million seven hundred thousand meals, 
and the name of Jesus has kept it open. Yeah. So now my brother, go ahead. <laughs> this is a Jesus food place. Take your money back to Take Washington. Take your money on back where it came from. Yeah. But wait a minute. Let me just ask something. Yes. If the money is available, yes. what kind of country are we living in that we, the people, yes. cannot say that this comes to them in the name of Jesus? What kind of country is this, Pastor? And even more frightening, I could have said in the name of many other things. You could have said any other name. I could have put a curse word up there and it would have been all right. They wouldn't yeah. have cared. And Christ. especially on our legal tender money in God we trust. Why don't yeah. they take that off then? That's, that's oh, don't hypocritical. Give them the idea. Don't give them the idea. Oh, <laughs> you try it, yeah. turkeys. Yeah. Yeah. But I really want to answer your question. Yes. I really want to answer your question. I'll be as short That's as I can. Scary. Uh, when uh, uh, Jed Gahoover was in, um, uh, you FBI. know, the FBI, he used to call in a group of people uh, to uh, inform us about the State of the Union. And uh, I don't know how my name got in it, but I would always be invited. It was a non-publicized meeting, 40 stories somewhere, a couple of hundred of us. And on this particular time, he was talking about the Black Panthers. And he said the Black Panthers had closed Central Park in New York. The Black Panthers caused four million white people to run across the bridge into the boroughs out of New York because they were scared. Black Panthers called churches to be closed at night. Black Panthers had shut down business in Harlem. So I knew the answer, but I asked a question. <clears throat> I said, Mr. Sullivan, how many Black Panthers are there in New York running four million white people out of town shutting down Central, I mean Central Park, closing up the churches at night, and then all that. He said, 87. 87? <laughs> Only And 87. so I want, when you said, what, what, how can that happen? A determined, demonic, satanic, small crowd causes that to happen. My Lord while we just sit back and say, let it happen. And the body of Christ, it doesn't say anything. And, and the body of Christ, the it just doesn't say Christ, anything. It just a little old anything. small group of people in any town, any city. I was on four commissions in the city of Los Angeles, and there was a hundred people that would show up to every commission meeting and raise hell. And they were the same crowd, whether I was on housing or planning, they was the same crowd. When here are seven million out there, don't even attend the meeting. Mm. So kooks, and anti-God and anti-Christ people are running this country, and it ain't but a handful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It ain't but a handful. What do we do? Well, we, we, uh, we wake up uh, Jerry Falwell's silent majority. <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean, that's what we do. We, we wake mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. do, do you see what I mean? Yes. Yeah, for instance, we have 6,000 evangelical churches in Southern California. If every church organized a community committee, a committee on community affairs, every church, and start attending these meetings right. where, where regulations Amen. are made and, Amen. and start Amen. attending Amen. these conferences Amen. and these, these grassroots areas. That is kingdom yeah. living. Yes. That's kingdom yes. living. Yes. Start attending. That's We've got to In do. Los Angeles, there are 100 people who are going to attend city council every time there's a major vote. They are there. They are organized. Well, I mean, 6,000 churches, we could have 600 there, mm -hmm. do you see? Mm -hmm. But in our absence, they literally scare elected officials to death, mm -hmm. do you see? I mean, they threw almost eggs at me because I ignored them because, you know, uh, my name in, in, in derogatory in the paper don't, doesn't do anything but help fill up Mount Zion, so I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> spell my name right. Yeah, huh? spell my name right so they know what church to come to. But, uh, <laughs> But, uh, so they didn't bother me. Uh, uh, but if, if every church, if, if, if a great big, I know of, of, of church, say, with 10, 15,000 people, surely there are five people that could make up a community interest committee yes. mm -hmm. to it. find out Do what's it. going on yeah. and go there and go to meetings and have an interest in what's happening to your city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you, your city, I don't care whether it's out here or in Los Angeles, your city, and I can tell you not only because I pastored in Los Angeles for 37 years, I was a commissioner of the city of Los Angeles for 11 and a half years, and I'm going to tell you, your city is run by anti-Christ kooks. Right. Yes. I mean, foolish folk. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, folk who, who, who hate God and everybody else, but they're running the town, and we ought to overrun them. Mm. Amen. I mean, you know what? Let, <laughs> let me tell you one other little quick story mm. that'll drive all of this home. Mm. You, you remember Doug Weed, honey, that, yes. that worked on uh, President Bush's... Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. He was the liaison yeah, to all know. the religious and other. He was. A, he had a high, almost a cabinet position. I think it was a yes. sub cabinet. Uh, Doug lives over in, in Phoenix today, and uh, he opened the White House. And during the Reagan and Bush years, yes, we had a wide open entree. I got. I met President Bush four or five times. And yes, everything that went on in the White House, he would invite you and me and just a, a, a lot of good other Christian leaders. I asked Doug a very important question. I said, Doug, how many letters mm -hmm. on a particular issue coming into the White House finally gets on the radar screen and gets the president's attention? Mm -hmm. I thought it would let have to add, be... Let me answer. Yeah. Twelve. You're right. <laughs> Twelve. I thought it would be thousands. You Twelve know? letters will run any mayor, any city councilman no, crazy. That's right. If yeah. the mayor, if the mayor, uh, the mayor yarded when I served... If the mayor got 10 letters, <clears throat> he would get on that phone, Dr. Hill, could you please come down? Yeah, we know. have an avalanche of right. protests. <laughs> <laughs> 10 letters, you know, 10. That's true. Yeah. That's, I, 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 that's I'm, true I'm saying, programming at TV. Yeah. And if I get 10 bad ones, I'm going, whoa. What's happening you know, here? Yeah. Do you see? You take a look. And, and so now, you see, we didn't review this. I told you 12 letters. Yeah. And 12 letters to your mayor. Mm -hmm. Your mayor of your city. Or your president. Or uh, your president of the United States. Just 12 letters. Now, here we are, 240 million people, and 12 kooks can write him, and he'll say, oh, what in the world is going on? I mean, change that. Change my vote. Change this. Tell Congress to pass a new law. Do anything. Over 12 letters. Yeah. Not 12,000. 12. I Come mean, that's 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. We can be running this country in the morning. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's 200 of us in here tonight. Pastor. Okay, I just want to say something. Who do I write <laughs> to get you that discount on food and allow you to keep the sign up in, in the Lord's kitchen? The food banks. The food banks. Is food that, banks. can, can that's we That's government write? food given to nonprofit organizations. And that's my tax money. That's our tax money time. buying it. And why can't he get the discount for those poor people in L.A.? I have a and sign, keep the up, sign there. up Welcome in the name Pastor, of Jesus. Well, will, will you get us the name oh, yeah. of who I'll, to write I'll to? Give, I'll, 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 of course. I'll will you all write? the discount. Yeah. We'll change this. Yeah. We'll change this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's do it. I'll write my letter tonight. Give me a pink. All right. Give me a Let me finish my little story. Right. Uh, we kind of got sidetracked here, <laughs> but it was a good sidetrack, I can tell you. When Pastor was getting ready to open the Lord's Kitchen 12, 13 years ago, he was going to originally call it the Pastor's Kitchen. And then you had a dream yes. that night, and the dream was? <laughs> there were so many people in line. See, I, I was going to name it the pastor's kitchen because I thought about 20 people would need a meal. And I told my wife she would run it with her friends and they would cook the meal. And I wanted the nation to know that Pastor Hill was feeding the hungry. Mm -hmm. But there were so many people in line, I woke up and named it the Lord's Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I told her, I said, Lord, you're going to have to run this place. <laughs> I love that, I love that I little love story. That. Well, we named this Trinity. We needed all three. Oh, <laughs> well, the Lord is the Trinity, of course. <laughs> oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Well, I see the preaching Bible is here, and Steve Brock's got a microphone. Let's have another song and get ready, Pastor Hill, to just open the book and preach a good word for us. Then Benny Hinn will be along in a little bit to lead us in our prayer for uh, your pledges that are still coming in. I'll, I'll run that little clip for you one more time, maybe after Steve sings for us. But I love this precious, precious song. Hallelujah. How many are ready to go tonight if Jesus Amen. comes? Amen. Lately I got leaving on my mind.
the windows and the shutters are letting in the cold, cold air. Say to myself, I'm gonna fix it when I can find the time. come to this place I don't seem to get excited anymore about this whole world and what it can give I couldn't care less if I could buy Los Angeles for a solitary time for what in the world Los Angeles, I got leaving on my mind lately. All I got is leaving on my mind. It seems that's all I think about. old troubled world my old nagged pain behind lately I've got leaving leaving on my mind say where I'm going hey It's gonna turn me here in Jerusalem to eliminate the followers of this false messiah. I 
Within a year, no one will remember the names of Jesus or Paul. Satan, you have nothing with which to tempt me. Satan! I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her! Do you think you can go around destroying other people's property? Well! Gladly pay this price to see someone freed from Satan's chains. Remember when, when you were singing and we said it's a boy? That's when I'll believe in him. The Holy Spirit who lives within us is stronger than anything on earth. You. You've given me back my life. Please help him. I think he's going to die. This Jesus is the one true God. Just as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. I have preached that both the Jews and the Gentiles should repent and turn to God. Hey, you are out of your mind, Paul! I pray that I can remain as faithful to the end. My Lord. To receive your own video copy of Paul, the Emissary, Call us now and support TBN's Macedonian Call. Yes, 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 yes. And dear friends, this is the last call. That is very likely the last time you'll ever see that little clip roll in of the emissary. The Macedonian Call is over. I kind of extended it because some of you pled with us that you couldn't get through on the phones, and I said we'll keep it unofficially open until Benny gets here tonight to literally pray over all of the slips. You want to make a pledge? Of course I want. All right. In fact, is there anyone in the little audience here that would like to get in get on this image. final, final call? Wave at me up there. Yeah. All right. In just a little bit, we'll have someone out to serve you with a little pledge slip. Just put your name and address My on it, the amount of Brandon your pledge. My grandson will bring it. There's Wait. our grandson, Brandon. Brandon, go get pledge slips, baby. Brandon Paul Crouch <laughs> the third. <laughs> is here tonight. And uh, yes, we'll serve you, dear ones, here in the audience. But you at home, the lines are jammed, I know, and you're getting a busy signal. So I tell you what, I told you on behind the scenes, put the address up. If you just can't get through on the telephone, sit down and on a postcard or a letter, just send your pledge for the Macedonian and make sure you say, I want the emissary, the life of the Apostle Paul and send it to TBN PO Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. The address is on your screen, and we'll accept your final pledge by mail, okay, if you just can't get through on the telephones. But this is it. This is the only time it'll be offered on home video this year, and maybe ever. I, I don't know. We'll see how the Lord directs. Because new movies are coming out. Yes, they are. Carmen's new movie will be out. Carmen's what? movie, Mission 316, we'll is out. coming out very soon. It's going to be premiering some of it on October 31st, Halloween. live on TBN. Yeah. Wonderful. And uh, we've got a lot of wonderful movies coming. The Portrait, and then one about the Ancient Code. So we're working on several movies right now. And when all hell breaks loose. <laughs> mm is under production right now. They're writing the script. I'm going to have a meeting this Friday. You need to be there, there. this Friday, my dear. And uh, that's going to be, we're going to meet the Antichrist, the false prophet, but we're also going to meet Jesus Christ in this film. So pray for us as we do probably the most well, difficult, I suppose, motion picture of all that will be seen, of course, in the VR theaters as well as ultimately be made available on home video as well. Well, let's tell one more time. Here is Steve Brock's pledge. <laughs> Whoa, $1,000. Bless you your sweetheart. sweetheart. You will get we'll you the, the emissary. Nice. You will get the emissary. Are, are you in debt? Do you have any debts? No. You're out of debt? I'm out of debt. Praise the Lord then. If you're in debt, tell the prayer partner the amount of your debt. We will have yet another debt burning service. Well, I, I could agree be. with you in <laughs> Jesus' name. You just thought Something just came dead. to my mind. Future dead. <laughs> I was listening to John Hagee tonight, and he said, the best thing if you're in debt is to go have plastic surgery. Yeah. 
Go Petrified. home and cut that plastic <laughs> credit card in, too. Uh, oh, God, good good advice, call. Pastor call. John. Anyhow, <laughs> anyhow, anyhow. If Brandon's you, up there giving pledge slips. <laughs> sure. Right? Wave at Brandon if you need a pledge slip. This is it, folks. I'm ki not kidding. This is the last call, and we're going to put all of these over on the stack there, and Benny Hinn will be in a little bit. He's going to lead us in a great time of prayer, not only for your physical healing, but for your financial healing. Amen. And for all of the things that you need Nobody from the Lord tonight. Wait, okay. I want to ask Brandon something. Brandon, have you filled one out, baby? Have you filled out a pledge slip? All right. Hey. Yes. Hey. hey. Good boy. I didn't know that. <laughs> Papa and Grandma Toddy. Right. Yes. And so did his own dear mom That's and dad. Great. Okay, let's tell Pastor Evie Hill, Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, we really, really love him. Oh, yes, we do. As he opens the word. Let us pray. And now, our gracious Heavenly Father, break thou the bread of life that we may live. Cause it to go out over the waves that men may believe, rejoice, and be saved. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Paul, in his first letter <clears throat> to the church at Thessalonica, 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, and beginning with the 16th verse, and it was providential that um, the, song, the song that was sung feel like leaving because that ties into my text. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up <clears throat> together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these things. Therefore, comfort one another with these things. I've been led to speak tonight on <clears throat> what will be the final outcome <clears throat> of the church on planet Earth. Where are we headed to? And this is so important because of the kind of lectures and the kind of writings and the kind of articles, kind of television programs on other stations and radios that's coming out. There are those who are suggesting that the church has already demised. Uh, and I don't understand that because I'm, I'm still here. And there are those who say the church is no longer relevant and all of these kinds of critical statements. So I thought I would speak not only to those of you who are here tonight, but those who are listening completely across this world on just where are we and where are we headed as a church? What's to be the ultimate outcome of us? What's our final destiny? Where are we going and when will we get there? Uh, there are those who are struggling with this idea. There are those who are at home wondering because you have not been taught or you have not read about the final outcome of the church. Shall we just always be on earth with steeples to go to? And, and when we die, we just go back to the dust? Uh, and there's no more to us, as some teach. Some say that there is no hereafter when the Bible plainly tells us that after death, judgment uh, is just as plain as it can be. And so I thought to say to us tonight uh, some words about the finality of our sojourn here on earth and our continuing existence so that we may have the comfort of Paul, the comfort of my mama, and uh, the comfort of all of those who have died in the Lord. According to Paul, <clears throat> there is coming a day. Now, I, I recognize the controversy over the time and all, but I'm going to preach 
on the basis of my mama's theology. My mama was my theologian. Uh, I, I, I didn't go to Howard and Harvard and Preston and, and, and all those other schools. Uh, I got my theology from my mama's knee. And I haven't done too bad with it. I've stuck with it. And it's brought me safe this far, and I'm too old to change. Uh, according to my mama, uh, Paul said <laughs> that there is coming a day. Amen. There is coming a day. I don't care how long you have heard that. I don't care how you have become impatient with that. There is coming a day. Now, we've been talked about that for a couple of thousand years almost. But remember now, in the economy of God, that's only been two days ago. Just, just two days ago, because a thousand years is like unto but one in his sight. So it was actually said only day before yesterday. That's just a couple of days ago. So be patient because you're running too fast. Uh, you're on God's time, not yours. According to Mama, Paul said <clears throat> that there is coming a day, and this is an exciting day, that Christ himself shall descend. Christ himself shall descend. Amen. Now, that's why I separate this day from those who claim that the coming of Christ is every time somebody dies, uh, the soul goes up. But this book says Christ himself shall descend. Not, not the dead go up, but Christ come down. He shall descend and stop in midair. Now, there are those intellectuals who bring up the point, now, now how can he just stop in midair? Well, that's exactly where we are now. We're in midair. There ain't no two-by-fours under us holding us up. We're out here circling around in midair. <laughs> and, and, and that, that's, that's, that's where we are now. We're circling around. <laughs> and we haven't fallen since God put us out here. And we're not going to fall until he takes us out of here. Amen. So he, he's able to do whatever he says he can do. And Christ shall stand in midair. Now, according to Paul, <clears throat> there's going to come this day when he shall come with a loudness, with the trump of God and the voice of an archangel. Oh, glorious day. Uh, we, we, we shall behold him. And the world shall behold him later on, but he shall come in midair. Don't let that get out of your thoughts. Don't let that get out of your belief. Don't let that be lost in nothing no man writes who hadn't died yet. Don't, 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 don't let, keep that fresh in your mind. There is coming a day. We're not going to have always what we have now. We're not going to live always under the conditions we're living now. One of the great hopes of my foreparents who were slaves was there's coming a day. I said there's coming a day. It was called old-fashioned and foggy, but it kept them alive because they said there is coming a day. When Christ, who is presently at the right hand of the Father, he is making intercessions on our behalf. Now, that's where I want him to stay. I want him to stay right there because the devil is also coming before the Father daily with a report on me saying, here's what Hill did today. And uh, he, he, he did what he promised he couldn't do. So now he raised his name, but Jesus is there saying, but put him back. He's mine. He, he, he's mine. He's mine. And all of those, including some of us who pass on before that day comes, will come with him. They are coming with him. They are known right now as the church triumphant. They have already passed over. Their bodies might well be at the bottom of some sea, 
Their bodies might well be in some burnt ashes somewhere. Their bodies might be in some graveyard somewhere. And don't ever spend a whole lot of time going to the graves trying to talk to mama if she was saved. Because if she's saved, she ain't there. You just out there talking to yourself. You ain't talking to no mama. And some of the things you're saying out there, you should have said before mama died. You, you, mama has already seen his face on the streets of glory. Ain't that wonderful? And she, she, she is enclosed with a more glorious body that will never grow old. Ah, uh, oh, when I was much younger, a, a, a more glorious body wasn't appealing to me because I had a glorious body. <laughs> I, I was 100 pounds lighter. I, I had hair on my head. I, could, I, 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 I had a solid mouth of teeth. I was incredibly handsome. <laughs> and so a more glorious body wasn't appealing to me but I'm now pushing my teeth around with my tongue. <laughs> and and, and I'm, afraid, I'm, I'm afraid every morning to brush my hair because some more will come out. And this old stomach, no matter how I died, won't leave me as hard fat. And so a glorious body is beginning to look good to me. Amen. Old Arthur Riders and New Riders are going to leave me one day because I'll have a more glorious body. And we shall come with him. Christ shall bring those who are already gone with him. Now, he shall stop in midair. But all of those who come with him shall momentarily go to the place where they fell for the purpose of the greatest demonstration that has ever happened in the world. And that is every grave, every spot, everywhere you drop momentarily will rise. Oh, what a day. I said, what a day. And it will be as fast as the twinkling of an eye. You don't have to worry about waiting here long. Because when he comes, it's going to be moving fast. And we're going to get everybody who's already with him will get situated where you fail. Don't worry about it. If you fail in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, you're going to situate yourself there. He'll, he'll call you from the middle. The dead will, the grave will give up the dead. The ocean will give up the dead. The fire will give up the dead. That's why every now and then God drops some information to us. We didn't know 10 years ago nothing about no DNA. We, we thought when you're dead, you're done. Now they can find your ashes and, and find you guilty. You, 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 you. <laughs> they, 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 they find your ashes and find you guilty. You, you, you just can't hardly get away because God is trying to reveal that nothing he made can be destroyed. Amen. And when he speaks, all of me, no matter where I am, will coagulate. Say amen. amen. I said it'll coagulate. It'll come together for everything obeys his voice. And then those who haven't died and who are still walking around, one married to a sinner, another one singing in the choir with sinners all around them, another one sitting out in the audience and sinners sleeping next to him during church. At the twinkling of an eye, at the twinkling of an eye, they shall be changed and caught up to meet him in there. And so this man who's been cussing his wife out in the kitchen, he's hollering in there after her. He'll look around and say, did you hear me? No, she's gone. A oh, whole lot of dead folk in church sitting up there sleeping and going. Will all of a sudden open their eyes. Pastor's gone. Half of the choir gone. Usher's gone. What happened around here? You got left. <laughs> For the living shall be raptured. And look at this meeting in the air. Christ himself shall be there. All who've gone on before shall be there. 
and then those who are changed shall be there. And then the book said, and so shall we ever, oh, bless his name, be with the Lord. I said, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, in a very definite sense, we are with the Lord right now. He's dwelling in us through his Holy Spirit. We're with the Lord, and, and sometimes you can feel his presence so until you have to be like me. Sometimes I'm praying and studying, and I look at the clock, and it's 2 o'clock in the morning. And I have to say, now, Holy Spirit, you don't have to sleep nor slumber, but I got to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. And so now let me sleep, please. And no sooner than I said it, I fall off to sleep because he recognizes that I'm in an earthen vessel, that I'm in a vessel that I won't have when I've left this place. And so we will have glorious bodies. And, and the book of Revelations gives us a whole list of no mores, no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more age, no more this, no more that in this more glorious body. And what a meeting we shall have when all who've gone on before and all who are still down here gather and behold him face to face. My, 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 my God, I don't have language nor emotions to demonstrate that. My family is gradually, it used to be almost a whole town down in Texas. We're down to about 30 now because all of the others have gone on. And just, 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 just year by year, somebody else is going on, going on. And, and signals comes to me every now and then by saying, it ain't long. You, you'll be going on. But, 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 but there's coming a day when the church, nothing but the church, join whatever you want to join. But if you want to join that which will be when all else is gone, you better get in the church. And I don't, I'm not talking about no building. For that, that shall be ashes under the soul of the righteous. And I'm not talking about nothing that's formalistic. I'm talking about the born again crowd shall gather to meet him in the air. Hey, wait a minute here. I want to tell you, we got something coming for us. I've been a lot of places, and I've seen a lot of faces. I've had some most, I, I, I was reared in a log cabin. I picked cotton and shook peanuts and everything. But, but there's coming a trip uh, that I want to take. I, I, I've been a whole lot of places. They were good to me over in India. They were good to me in Moscow. They were nice to me down in Tonga. They were nice to me down in Texas. But that moment, that morning when the church shall be caught up out of this present world, and no matter how beautiful this present world is, it is no way compared to what God has in store. Treat us like you want to treat us. Write whatever laws you want to write. Do whatever you want to do. Make it illegal for us to raise our hand. I read somewhere down here in Orange County that a church is having trouble because the neighbors are trying to put a sound barrier around the church that they can only sing so loud. I ran into that in Hawaii that right next to the church. They had me over there preaching and I hollered out and neighbors had the police to come and said he's got to tone it down. And I didn't want to do it, but I'm way over there in Hawaii, and I don't want to get arrested over there. <laughs> and, and, and so I kind of said, uh, uh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. <laughs> it's just like one of a Negro woman back down in the South, she went to a white church, and, and the white preacher was up, and they're not quite as loud as we are, but he, he said, and the Lord is good. And this Negro woman said, yes, he is. And an usher came and said, shh. And she said, but I got religion. He said, but you didn't get it here. <laughs> and she said, well, I, I'll, I'll try to keep it. I'll try to keep it under cover. I'll try to do my best. And then she said, and the Lord shall come. He said, oh, yes, he will. <laughs> and they came over and said, now, if you do that one more time, 
we're going to have to take you out of here. That may be you folks' custom, but it's not our custom. We just sit quietly now, no more noise. She said, I'll, I'll do my best, praise God, I'll do my hallelujah. I'll... <laughs> and then she said, and they buried him on Friday and early Sunday morning. He got up, she said, oh, yes he did. <laughs> And two great big ushers came and got her and was dragging her out. And she said, praise the Lord. And they said, now what are you praising him for now? We're about to throw you out. He ran in on one and I'm riding out on two. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Ah, oh, that's a glorious day. I've had many privileges. I've met presidents. I've been entertained by kings. But oh, when I behold his face. In all of his glory. And the apostle closes out this chapter by saying, comfort yourself with this thing. Comfort yourself with these words. Those of you who are having struggling problems and difficulties making in, get some comfort out of this word. It won't be that way always. God has something coming for us. God has something in store for us. Comfort yourself. Get yourself up. Put some spizzerectum in yourself. Pick up your lostness and your loneliness and your uh, uh, faintness and comfort yourself with the fact that there's coming a day when God shall come for us, church. And praise God, all who are ready shall catch that morning train. Comfort yourself, comfort yourself, comfort yourself, comfort yourself. I said comfort yourself. Comfort yourself that those who've gone on before you get glad over the fact that one day we're going to meet again. Comfort yourself. Comfort yourself that we shall be changed and we shall meet him in the air. Then he goes on in, 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 in 1 Corinthians, it says, not only shall we be caught up, but we shall be caught up with him who then shall judge us. Now, we shall not be judged for the heaven or hell question. That's settled. You settle that before you leave here. But when the church all gathers, Paul says in the book of Corinthians, we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of what we have done since we were saved. We were saved by a gracious act of God. Come on in and be seated. You are now a child of the king. But now until you leave here, what you do as a child of the king, you must stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of it. And he encouraged us by saying in, 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 in 1 Corinthians here, he, he tells us we must stand before the judgment. But in the book of Revelations 2 and 10, he says, but for everyone who is faithful until death, I will give him a crown of life. So now when you ask me the destiny of the church, here it is, number one, we won't be here always. I said we won't be here always. Thank God for that. There's a whole lot I like about this country, and particularly America, but I won't be fooling with it always. I want something better. I said, I want something better. My God, this auditorium I'm in and, and next door, the headquarters. What better can I want something better? Amen. I love the house I live in. I love the house I live in. I love my wife. I love my dog. I love everything about it. I love the swimming pool and all that, but want something better. Because all 
that's down here is fading. It's fading. It looks good for a while, but 20 years from now, we'll have to build another one of these. But when we all get to heaven, there'll be nothing better. And he says, I'm going to give you a crown, particularly those who keep looking for his appearance. And one of the reasons I want to preach tonight is because so many eyes of believers have gotten off of, is it coming? To saying, this is all right down here. This is all right. This is all right. This, this chair here looks enough like a, a, a throne. But the church must be admonished to keep on looking for him to come. Keep on looking for him to come. And when he comes, he shall bring those with him and shall gather up us. And that will be over with. The only hell I'll ever have is on earth. And when he calls me either before or change me, bye, bye, hell. No more, no more, no more, no more, no more, no more, no more. If you want to get me, if you want to give me hell, you better get in a hurry. Because the headlines and the newscasters and the prophecies are coming true that there are but a few things left before he comes. And when Jesus comes, all tears will be washed away. When Jesus comes, all will be forgotten and forgiven. When we shall rise in the power of his might, there shall be no more death, no more separation, no more sea. And until he comes, comfort yourself with that. Go home tonight, and you who are at home tonight, comfort yourself that he's coming. Just this, and I'm through. Living in the country, hungry, no money hardly. Papa would leave and go, and when he would come back, I would notice a little sack on his back. And what joy would come to my soul, because I knew that in that little sack, Papa had found something for us. And when Jesus comes, whatever your dreams that have not been made, whatever has not come to pass, whatever has not been fulfilled, don't jump. Wait on Jesus. Don't surrender. Don't quit the faith. Wait on Jesus. Because when he comes, I'll be with him everything that we miss down here. The destiny of the church we shall overcome. Praise him. So. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Pastor Hill. I want you just before you leave to lead us in a final prayer and let's invite people to know this Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Let me just read one little word that has blessed me so many times and this is from the Living Bible, 1 John 1, 10 through 12. But although he made the world, the world didn't recognize him when he came. Even in his own land and among his own people, the Jews, he was not accepted. Only a few would welcome and receive him. Here's the good part. But to all who received him, yes. he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. All they needed to do was to trust him, trust him. to save them. Yes. Lead them to Jesus, Pastor Hill. You who are right there, the greatest is yet to come. Yes. I don't care what your experiences have been. I don't care what your experiences are. The greatest is yet to come. You may have been a champion. You may have been a star. You may be this. You may be that. But there's coming a moment when Christ shall come to receive the church. Yes, sir. To receive the believers. Oh, Lord. 
And that even won't be, it won't be in Hollywood, it won't be in Washington, it won't be in Philadelphia, it'll be in midair. Amen. And we will be equipped out of these bodies to move into midair. And then I've been so many places where I've had to say goodbye. I've had Paul, you and Jan and I, we've been all over this country, but we've had to say goodbye. Yes, sir. And to many of those we've said goodbye to, we, we, we haven't seen since. No. And many of them I've said goodbye to, they're already gone. Yes, Lord. But in that new land, there'll be no more goodbye. And I want you to know, now it, it, it might sound foolish, it may not sound believable. Your professors in, in philosophy might not agree. But all you have to do now, within your own heart, in your living room, in your car, wherever you are, is say, save me, Lord Jesus. Amen. Yes, Lord. I mean, that's, that's, that's just as simple. Amen. He has made it so that there are no steps up to salvation. He has made salvation level at the foot of the cross. And he's not there batting and knocking nobody back. Nobody back. You've been a drunk? Come on. Come on. Yes, tell yes Lord. Yes, you a hooker? Come, come on, on here. Pastor. Amen. <laughs> you a pimp? Come on, preach. <laughs> Whoever you are, sign me up. Yes, Lord. But Pastor, what about all of my faults and everything? Boy, he can make you a new creature overnight. <laughs> yes, Lord. And some of this may not come off of you, and you may have already knocked out your eye. But in your heart, you'll be a new creature. And so I want you to pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever utterance you have, you don't have to say exactly what I said, but let this be the unction of your spirit. Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins and save me. And write my name down because that moment of your coming could be tonight, could be tomorrow, could be tomorrow evening, or it might be 500 years. But when it comes... It will be worth it all if you're caught up to meet him in the air. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Thank you. Hill. God bless you, sir. Go with you. Give Zion our love. God bless you. Be praying for you. God bless. Now, Steve sang, Lately I Got Leaving on My Mind, and it couldn't have been a more appropriate yeah. song for Pastor's message about that great day that's coming. <laughs> but until we're gone... We're supposed to give the devil trouble in Jesus' name. And to that end, God has always had a people. Bless God, the church triumphant is still alive and well. And the church said. God has always had a people. People who are blood bought, born again, separated free. People who are sound from center to circumference. People with consciences as steady as Gibraltar's mighty rock. God has always had a people. Sure, some have misunderstood the church. Like Simon the magician, they have failed to realize that God's Holy Spirit is not a blessing to be bought but an experience to be received. Others have maligned the church. Through their noisy unbelief, they've tried to spread a false rumor and say God is dead. But ladies and gentlemen, I can testify to you tonight, God is not dead. He is alive. How many believe that with me tonight? He is alive in us. He is more than enough for every need that we have in our lives. Even though he's been expelled in our public classrooms, pushed out of many of our churches, forgotten in many of our homes, God is still alive. Through this 20th century marches a mighty army, a my army of true people, God's people. They're called the church. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, they are alive. They are well. And how many will agree with me tonight? They are triumphant. In Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So let the church be the church. Let the people rejoice. Oh, we've settled. We've settled the question. We may. Let them speak.
Listen, child of God, Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. John the Revelator said, of all nations, kindred, peoples, and tongues, stood before the throne with, with palms in their hands, crying aloud, salvation to our God. Oh, my brokenhearted friend, you're not forgotten. The church is still alive. Family of God, be filled with fresh faith. The church is still alive. Businessman, give that business to God. The church is still alive. If you're concerned about your children, have no fear. The church is still alive. He is reaching out to every heart and to every life and letting us know it's alive. It's alive. Come join us, Steve. My goodness, my goodness. Well, what a joy to have my precious brother Benny Hinn here tonight. Now, his little introduction card, of course, Benny needs no introduction, but it always says at the top he is from Orlando, Florida. But I do understand that that address is changing soon. Is that correct? Is my mic on? Yes. <laughs> is his mic on? Can you all hear me? Yes. Well, God willing, soon, I'm going to live in this marvelous state. <laughs> California. Marvelous. Marvelous. God willing, uh, marvelous. Once, our, uh, once our studio is uh, ready, which will be the next few weeks, I can tell you about that. Yes. Then things will start happening. And we can say Benny Hinn. And I can come see Jen a little more often. That's and right. And you your daughters. And, and, your and my beautiful son. girls. Yeah. From Southern California. <laughs> well, we, we may have to say from both places for a, yes. for, for a while. Yeah. Yes. You're like me. I'm, my you home is wherever world. my briefcase is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Uh, Steve, yes, I'm, sir. I'm proud of you. Thank you, sir. Uh, you sang a song I haven't heard before. <gasps> you haven't heard that? <laughs> I ever heard him sing. I mean, he all sang. I hear the man sing is happy day. Oh, happy day. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> leave it on my mind. That's your, yeah. Those are your two favorite songs, though, Pastor. You. <laughs> if you sing happy day one more time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I sang the last time I, I was at your church ministering? In your happy church? day. I know yes, I heard. I did. I sang, oh, happy day. <laughs> You did it just for me, right? I did, and I said to the congregation, I said, this is Pastor Benny's favorite song. <laughs> and I actually, I almost couldn't do the song for laughing. I got to. You are so funny. I want the whole world to know I have more fun with this man. He makes me laugh. <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> and he is so funny. Um, I think when we get to, to heaven, he'll be a He'll be a comedian. <laughs> you know what? He also sings a chorus that you may not have heard. Uh, which one? The Church of God is Right. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to the, the Lamb. lamb. There, is a, there is a chorus. Well, there's a, there's a second <laughs> verse to that. What? How does it go? We'll soon be dressed in white. Hallelujah. To okay, how does it well, go? The Church of God is right. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The Church of God is right. And are they right? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I just came from the General Assembly. Oh. They're all right. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I think we should broaden that. In San know, Antonio, the, Texas. God really only has one church. He does? So in <laughs> that sense... Well, it's a church of God. Can yeah. you believe it? Uh, Paul, he... Uh, hey, I, 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 I'd like you all to know that Steve Brock was in our conference in Dallas last week. Yes. And he told the people <laughs> that he was preaching in some church and while preaching, he was preaching on the coming of the Lord, and he said, Behold, I come quickly. And he kept saying it. And then he fell in a lady's lap. <laughs> really? Yeah. And then the lady said to him, Well, you warned me three times. <laughs> oh, no, you apologized. Well, for I apologized to her, and yeah. I said, I'm sorry. And she said, That's all right, you warned me three times. <laughs> 
but I tell you, I tell you something. Now, did that really happen? No, no, no. It's just a story. It's just a story. Of course, I was in Dallas in the conference. I got to tell you this. Yes. The pastor is now. It's 106 degrees. Yes, we okay? were there oh, for three weeks. It's hot. So, a pastor gets up and says, "We're going on a cruise. Where would you like to go? To the uh, Bahamas? No, to the Caribbean. To the Caribbean, or to Alaska?" Okay, it's 106 degrees out there. They don't want to go to the Caribbean. Everybody <laughs> hollers, Alaska. You know. Sure. So I say to Pastor, Pastor, do we get to play golf in Alaska? Mm -hmm. And he says, well, possibly. I said, well, we get to hunt in Alaska. He said, well, I don't know. And I, I, I proceed to tell him about a friend of mine who went hunting, bear hunting. In Alaska? Uh, he in Alaska. said that publicly, by the way. Okay. He did. Go. Yeah. And so he was out hunting, first time he'd ever been hunting for bear. <laughs> so he saw this bear and he picked up his rifle and aimed it at the bear and pulled the trigger and the gun went click. Ooh. Yeah. So the bear turned and looked at him and started running toward him. Now, Pastor is engrossed in this story. Because I was, I, I, I believed him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually <laughs> believed that thing happened. Well, I'm, I'm believing him up to this point myself. <laughs> so the brother fell on his knees and he began to pray. And he said, oh God, let it be a Christian bear. <laughs> oh God, let it be a Christian by, bear. And, and by now I began to doubt him. Yes, yeah. I am too. He yeah. looks up and he sees the bear on his knees. Yeah. And the pastor says, whoop. Glory to God, he's a Christian bear. So he kind of slows his prayer down to listen to what the bear is saying. And the bear is saying, thank you, Lord, for this food that's been set. Oh, oh he was not ready for that. No, I wasn't. That was the funny. It was a Christian bear then, wasn't it? Well, I, I don't know. It's just the story. Yes, I, I understand. I understand. Well, dear friends, we have some... <laughs> serious business to take care of tonight. Before you we leave like tonight, that. Benny, now, and, and so whenever the Lord moves and probably toward the end of our little time together, well, my did pledge. you know Steve Brock actually made pledge. A, a pledge tonight? Steve, I'm surprised. He's, he's a, a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful brother. I always make it. What happened, Benny, is you were here during the great week of Macedonian yes, call, sir. and it ended, you know, a week ago. People kept calling in saying, the lines were jammed, we couldn't get through, we couldn't get through. We, please keep it open, keep it open, keep... So I said, okay. I'll keep it open kind of unofficially till Benny Hinn gets here mm -hmm. next week on Tuesday. And so we're going to put all of your pledges that come in tonight, as well as in this room here, and those that came in all during the work of Macedonian Call. And as a final conclusion tonight, Benny, we promised everybody we'd all agree and pray over the prayer requests, yes, praise reports, the salvation slips, and the pledge slips. And so we will do that. So keep calling in all during this program. Mm -hmm. But before, and I know you've got a little word I do, from the I word. Really, uh, that fits with what we, we are talking about. But Benny, I have one quick little question. You said something during Macedonian Call that really struck fire in my soul. And I have quoted you in my newsletter that I wrote for, for October. You said that God always deals first with his natural seed, the Jews. That's right. The seed of the natural seed of Abraham. That's correct. <clears throat> that the Jewish people and the nation of Israel is like kind of God's timepiece, God's barometer, you know, whatever. But that he deals with them first, and then he deals always with his body, church. the church. That's right. Yeah. So this has been the year of Jubilee for the Jews, and it ends September 30th. That's correct. You said October 1st begins Ours. our year of Jubilee. That's correct. Hello? How can you all be so calm up there? My Lord. Explain that one more time. I... And it's... <laughs> if you're a Jewish Christian, you have two years. <laughs> That's right, Jan. Well, Jan said if you're a Jewish Christian, you have two, two, two years. Two years. <laughs> well, actually, we've kind of been right enjoying and, en and moving in on even the Jewish year of Jubilee. Well, Paul, it's the season. Okay. See, we are in a season. And I'm going I'm to tell you something. I've had things happen with me I, I, that, that are honestly, it's almost unbelievable. Uh, do you know, in the last few months, I've had things happen that had somebody told me they would, I'd say, no way. 
One of them happened yesterday. Yes. May I tell him? Yes, please. please. Uh, a few weeks ago, I felt led to give Steve Brock my cufflinks. And I don't know why. Because you love me, brother. Amen. <laughs> you love his song. Oh, happy day. Oh, oh happy, happy day. day. <laughs> well, anyways, I, I, I thought, oh, I should just felt that the Lord wanted me to give it to him. So I gave it to him. Right. And I forgot about it. Yesterday, I am uh, in a restaurant. Actually, I was going into a, into a restaurant, and there was a, a jewelry store across the way, very expensive jewelry store, with a policeman. You know, they, they put them out there, and you have to ring the bell. before. You can't go into that kind of store without an appointment. Mm. The owner saw me. I don't know who he is, did not know him from Adam or his wife. He sent me a gift with this, with this policeman or this guard. He came over to the, to the place where I, where I was. I was standing in line to go in with some people. He said, Mr. Hen, the owner of this store there, wants you to have this. I said, oh, well, you know, somebody hands you a box, you, you don't know what's in it. <laughs> so I, I never travel alone, and I think you know why. And some of our sick, some of our guys who are, my, uh, are security wouldn't let me. I said, and this guy said, it's okay. It's all right. Don't worry, man. So I open it, and there's the most beautiful cross in there. Beautiful cross. So I wanted to go over and say thank you to the man. So I walk over to say thank you. And then he was led to give me, and I kept telling, please don't do this. He said, oh, he said, you would hurt me if you would not accept this. I said, well, you already gave me this nice cross. He said, you would really hurt me if you, if you not accept this. He gives me the most beautiful cufflings. <laughs> Benny. Probably yeah. worth 20 times what I gave him. <laughs> it works. And God works. It, the, the, the amazing thing, Paul, is this is only one of many things that have happened along the way. And I'm seeing things happen in our ministry that are absolutely unbelievable. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, unbelievable. Hmm. Uh, I don't think it's happening just because I'm such a nice guy. I think we are in an atmosphere. We are. Amen. We are a in a season. A season. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. And there is truly an atmosphere now that is where the climate has changed. Mm -hmm. now, and, you know, listen, I'm not just saying this. I know it by the Spirit because, see, the Lord spoke to me and told me we are in this season. Yes. Now, when God speaks to you, He'll always tell you to do something about it. Amen. And the Lord said to me, He said, I want you to give a million dollars to other ministries I heard you in this season. Yes. Well, saints, you know, I mean, we don't have a million dollars laying around here. Because we need it like any ministry. But I said, okay, Lord, I'll do it. I'm nearly done giving it. Nearly done. Paul, the remarkable thing is what happens to, to a minister's income when you obey God. That's right. And what happens to our individual finances. Now, I know some precious saints and some other people, oh, here they are again talking about money. No, no, look, no. look. It's for them, Benny. It's for you. It's for them to exactly. catch it and exactly. to know how if to receive. If you don't want to hear this, well, then you're going to miss the harvest. It's how to receive. We have got to get to the Word. That's right. It's in the Bible. That's right. Now, can I just give a quick little testimony? Yes. Three please. minutes. Please. Yeah. A year and a half ago, really it was in 96, I truly believe that the devil had a plan to destroy our ministry completely. Mm -hmm. I went through hell for a year. Every single day, something was going wrong. I mean, it was like endless. You'd finish one problem, and another was just right there next to it. To the, to the place, it was so horrible. Now, I can't go through the details. Just believe me, it was the worst. I was in my car, Paul, on the way to the office. I was crying in my car, weeping. I was coming on the highway, 
and I was crying so bad I could not see the way, and I was afraid maybe I'd have an accident, so I wiped the you know, tears, and I came on the highway. You know how they're all going 80 miles an hour as you, as you come on. And I said, Lord, as I was coming on, I, I just, just in total frustration, I didn't know what else to say. I said, Lord, please do me a favor. Would you please tell me, are you still around? <laughs> yeah, I've just there. tell me, if you're still here, I'll gladly keep going. But if you're not, please just tell me, and I'll gladly just quit this thing. Because you get so low, you don't know what else to say. Right. Now, I know you're all thinking, oh, it can't happen to you. Oh, yes, oh, it did yes, happen it to can. me, believe me. Mm -hmm. Happens to all of us. Right. Yes, sir. And the more you do for God, the more you do for God, I think the, <laughs> the more the devil attacks you, frankly. Yeah. I know it. So, I'm, I'm, I'm on the highway. Now I get to the office. And amazingly, that, that day, Paul, you had called looking for me. I don't know for what. I don't even remember what it was about. So I called back, and a young lady na uh, named Judy answered the phone. I, I, I still have not met Judy. I don't think I have. Maybe I didn't. I didn't recognize it was her. But she said, uh, and I'd ask for you. Usually I ask for, Mar for your dear secretary, Margie. She said, well, Pastor Benny, can I give you a word that God gave me for you this morning? I said, well, oh, please. I, I was ready for a word from anybody. <laughs> yes. Most times, you know, when, when we're doing well, we don't want nobody to give us, to give us a word. But <laughs> that morning, I would have taken one from a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I understand. Uh, so she said, can I give you a word? I said, oh, please. Well, she said, would you mind? I, I'd like to go to my computer because it's in there. I said, please. And, of course, she didn't know what was going on. I had just, God is my witness, I finished in the car only an hour earlier. I had said, Jesus, are you there? Just tell me, are you here? The prophecy begins by, my dear Benny, I am still here. Oh, Benny. That girl blew Benny. me away. I, I, she works for Paul. Yeah. Yes, Judy, Judy also. also. Judy also, that's her. From there on, and if Judy is watching, thank you for obeying God. Believe me, that was a, a word <laughs> right on time. From there on, things began changing for me. Because it was knowing, just knowing Jesus was there meant everything to me. And you precious saints, you know, you see me preaching and ministering. Nobody knows what happens behind right. closed doors. That's right. right. That's right. Because when the anointing comes on me, in fact, <laughs> the anointing is my escape. Yes. Mm -hmm. True. Often. Uh, I so you stand under that anointing and you wish it'll just never end. Never end. But then you have to walk out and get back in whatever problems you had. Mm -hmm. But that year was so horrible. You, I cannot describe it to you. I cannot describe the pain, the misery. Yes. When that woman gave me that word, just from there on, things began to get better. But let me tell you something that I found. By the end of 96, I found that I had lost so much that I had not known about financially. Things were happening I did not know about. Things were uh, going on in our ministry. I don't want to get into details except just to tell you there was a lot of losses that were not, should not have happened. Not with the anointing, thank God, not with the organization, but just behind the scenes. Personally, I, find, I found out I had no insurance. My kids had nothing. Had something happened to me, they would have been left with zero, on and on. I said, Lord, I said, I'm going to start asking you for something. Now, I never asked that before. I mean, you know, you often pray and you forget these things. I said, Lord, will you do what you did for David? Because in 1 Samuel 30, the Bible says that David came to Ziglag mm -hmm. and found everything lost. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. He had lost his wives, mm -hmm. children, possessions. Mm -hmm. Everything. Everything was gone. Yeah. Now you may want to turn to that, will you? That's because I really believe God is about to do this in the church. And he prayed. And not only did he pray, he came into agreement with the, with the priest. And the Bible gives it this incredible f 
powerful verse. It says, and David recovered all and lacked nothing. Amen. Yes. He recovered his family, his possessions. In addition, here's the biggest miracle, I think. 400 men re recovered all. Mm -hmm. Not just he. All those who were associated to him shared in the blessings of God on him. Yes. I said, Lord, if you did it for David, and if you're God, I'm asking you to do it for me. Amen. 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 Good. It's simple. Amen. Good. I'm yes. here to tell you today, after all this that had, had happened, not only have I rec recovered all, I recovered things I... It was almost a blessing to not have what I had. Because what I have now is a hundred times better. Hundredfold. Yes, a hundredfold. Paul, it's like, it's like the Lord, the Lord who knew, who knew what would happen, restored everything and gave me better. Today, in, a, in just 30 days from now, and I want to thank Paul and Jan especially now for this. 30 days from now, we move into our studio here in California. It was, it, it's, that thing has happened so smoothly, so beautifully. I can't thank God enough and our precious partners enough and you precious saints because Paul and Jan had been allowing me to use the studio at TBN over there in Tustin. Tustin for free. You need to know this. You that, that watch, this is your day. I have not paid a cent for the last two years. It's been at least that. What is it, a year and a half or two? It's been a long time anyways. Using that studio there for free till ours is ready. Tomorrow, by the way, tomorrow, Wednesday is tomorrow, the, the, the 12th. 12th. We tape our last programs tomorrow at TBN. So Paul, uh, would you allow That's me to sad. do something? <laughs> That's sad. One for you. For you. In good Middle no. Eastern culture. No. <laughs> Kiss Steve. Kiss Steve. Uh, never mind. Uh, Steve wants a kiss. He can forget it. <laughs> anyway, uh, he might sing Oh Happy Day. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'll sing Oh Happy Day. <laughs> it, no way. Even if you sing Happy Day, I still won't do it. <laughs> but the thing is, and, and please hear this. These precious people that we know very well, though the world doesn't, but they are the greatest the great. givers I know. The uh, some preachers preach seed time on harvest and only practice, practice the harvest part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these people here, these people here <laughs> practice no, both. Practice really the seat time part way more yes, than sir. anything yes, sir. Any, anyone I've ever seen. Yes, sir. They have given and given and given and given and given and still giving. And Paul, I'm going to miss being at your great We're studio. In fact, you. I'm going to just come back. It was all just to, to do it. But we'll come down and see you at your. It's uh, just a few miles anytime away. Anytime you want. Yes. But God has done amazing things in that he took me out of this horrible thing we were in in 96. And now, the blessings, you know, there's a great verse my friend David always tells me. The blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no, no sorrow with no it. Sorrow. Amen. When God begins to bless you, the sorrows leave. That's it. Yes. Now, the other thing, at the end of that horrible year, which was, I pray I'll never have another one like it. Mm. When the devil thought, uh, when he, he knew he could not bring me down, he attacked my wife. Oh, sure. Because he'll try to bring you down. If he can't with you know, attacking you, he'll touch the closest thing to you. But now, after all this, thank the Lord, all is well. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Thank you. And, and, uh, and the wonderful thing is, is, Paul, is as the season began of harvest, it's like God has opened the windows of heaven. Yes. Now, I can tell you, saints, I really believe that God allows us to go through it so we can have faith to pray That's for right. you. That's right, and believe. That's right. Because uh, we cannot give you what we haven't gotten. That's right. right. 
So tonight, I am boiling with faith. <laughs> Glory. We are going to, mm. you know, this is no accident that we're going to pray for, for this now. If you should ask me what has been happening in the last few weeks, I'd say glory, glory, glory untold. I want to tell you something that is remarkable. I've had two invitations the last three weeks to Kuwait wow. and Dubai. Wow. And the cousin to the Emir of Kuwait yes. is coming to see me in Jordan. Wow. The cousin to the Emir. Right. You know how, how it all happened? Amazing. With that, this is a great story. During the Gulf War, Mrs. Giesen, Joan Giesen, was watching CNN. And the CNN reporter had said that the Kuwaiti royal family had fled to Saudi Arabia and were staying in the Sheraton Hotel. Her daughter at that time had been struck with, M with MS. This is before we knew her. Mm -hmm. So she tells her girl, she says, there's our answer, because they had no money. They, pick up, they picked up the phone, called the Sheraton Hotel in Saudi Arabia, Asked for the emir. Hello. They put him through to the emir, <laughs> oh. which was a miracle that they would even do that. That's right. She said, CNN announced he was at the Sheraton, so we thought, let's call him. <laughs> oh, brother. And only Joan Giesen has that kind of boldness. She sure does. Yeah. They called the emir, and she said, I'm Mrs. Giesen from America. Our country is doing much for you. Would you, uh, would you care to help us? He said, how, how can I help you? She said, he, she said, my daughter has a mess. We have no money. And the emir said, we'll help you. Shortly thereafter, they came to our crusade and God healed her girl. That's right. So they called back and said to the, to the emir, thank you for your offer. The, our, our, our girl is healed now. And they told him of what, what had happened. When we did this thing about Jordan, when, when we put this whole thing together, Joan called this man. He is sending his, um, oh, sorry, sorry. She called him. The cousin. She called the cousin. She called the, she called the cousin while we, we were in Dallas. Exactly. And he told her on the phone, he said, yes, I've heard of him. And he'd like to come to Jordan because when I told the, the crowd that I had just been invited, I, I have a letter from Kuwait to go preach. Yes, sir. Great. Come on with me, Paul. I love it. <laughs> and, and, or do you know yet? Uh, well, I think it's ne it's 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 it's, it's going to have to be. It's going to have to have to, of course, be next year because there's no way I, I can do it this year. But Paul, uh, God is opening these amazing doors. That's not just because we're all such nice people. Mm. This is the season. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No question about it. I just had, had, had another thing happen that would surprise you. Our friend Larry King has written a book on prayer. I have it. It's called Powerful Prayers. Larry really? King. Really? I have the, the book with me. In fact, I'll, sh I'll show it to you. They are asking me to promote it, and Mr. Larry King wants to come on This Is Your Day. <laughs> really? Well, you've been his guest, so... He should return the favor. And, uh, and I'm going to have him. Of course. Why not? Well, of course. Bring him on, praise the Lord. Some I think it would be marvelous. And his <laughs> book on prayer had just been, actually, it's not even out in bookstores yet. I have a copy. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, Lord, you're doing some amazing things in this world of ours. Amen. The world is opening. Look, saints, it's opening up like a flower. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, <laughs> this is, this is going to be something. I'm in a movie now. Hollywood called me <laughs> back and asked my permission if they put me in a movie. The scene is with a young man with his girlfriend kissing, and behind there, our program is running. Oh. And the young man looks at her and says, let's watch Benny Hinn, <laughs> all in this movie, I see. this big movie. So they said, will you let us? I said, of course I'll let you do it. Sure. But the thing, that, the, the thing is there's interest now in the supernatural. Right. I'm to put the address on at the same time. I'd love it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 2020 is doing a program on the supernatural and called us and wanted uh, the, uh, 
healing testimonies. We've sent ABC News healing testimonies. Wow. There's a new, I'm telling you, there's a new climate in America, saints. Yeah, beautiful. It's not just because it happens to be. Begging to be heard. It's the season for it. It's it. Why? 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 Because Jesus is coming, number one. Hello! <laughs> Glory and Paul. There's... What a day. I tell you, if, if you let me, I may just want to shout in just a little bit, but... Go ahead. Now, I'll just be calm here, Paul. We have a, we have a whole hour if you need it. Let me just quickly take you, and I've, I've, I've showed you this before, but just real quickly. Leviticus 25, because you were, you were asking about why the Jew first, right? Now, in a minute, what song would you want? Oh, what sing? song? Ah, oh, he sang enough. <laughs> 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 anything, you, anything you want. I'll even let him sing Happy Day, okay? <laughs> Uh, only one lady clapped, so forget <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, Paul, uh, let me just first say, just really quickly. Uh, you all remember that the Lord in Matthew 10 said to his disciples that they ought to only preach to the Jews in Matthew 10. Yes. Then in Matthew 28, he said, now go to the whole world. Yes. And Paul said, first comes the natural, then the spiritual. So that's God's order throughout the word. God said to Israel that in this Jubilee season, every 50 years, that one thing would always happen to them, and that was absolutely an eternal promise, mm. that they would return to their possessions. Yes. Yes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there is not a believer I know who has not lost something. True. Mm -hmm. Or hasn't had something stolen from them by the devil. Right. We are in the season for restored possessions. Hmm. Hear this. Think about what God restored to Israel when they went into Egypt. They lost everything while in slavery. Think about what God restored to Joseph. Yes. Think about what God restored to Jacob after he left his father's house. Time after time after time, men were completely, uh, well, at first they had nothing, and then God restored everything back and more. It's his way to bless his people. Job. <laughs> oh, Job, and on and on. Now, here's the thing we have to do. Please hear this, because if you do not do this, God may allow tragedy to put you in a corner. And sometimes he'll do that to wake you up. You've got to start focusing your prayer properly. The time has come you ought to quit praying the same prayers you've been praying the last 50 years. Mm. God bless me, forgive me, keep me. He's been doing that. You would not be here if he hadn't been blessing and keeping you. <laughs> Amen. Right. Start enlarging your vision. The Bible clearly states that God wants to increase our capacity to receive. In Isaiah 60 it says, your heart will fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea will what? Be converted unto thee. The, the abundance of the sea, the sea represents nations, is coming your way. We have all believed and preached that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for who? The righteous. We've all preached and believed. Ye shall lend and not borrow. But are we there? No. We've all preached, these blessings shall overtake thee. Have they? Not yet. We've all preached and believed that God's blessings are ours. But if you look at reality, it's a miserable condition. It's time we, we focus our prayer on what God has promised us. In my case, I was forced into it. I had no choice. Because in reality, I was going through tragedies. And I said, no, 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 no. If God promised it, if God is God, then he will do what he said. Amen. Amen. And you see, faith comes alive when you read this. Because most times we pray cheap prayers. We don't mean what we say to God. True. Unless a problem hits us and then, boy, we get serious. Mm -hmm. 
So don't wait till tragedy hits you. I'm, I may be saving your life right now by telling you, get in and obey God before something may happen that may force you to obey God. Right. Yeah. Most, look, many believers really don't give, they tip. True. They don't give, they tip. They tip God on Sunday morning and they tip Him. No, no. Brother, don't insult Him. And don't think that this is all some, no, no, this is in God's Word. Yes. There's no such thing in the Bible as God wanting to uh, keep His people in lack. This is the day for blessings untold. Amen. Not only because of what's happening with the gospel going around the world, God wants to see His people free more than we want to be free. Yes. Now, Paul, the Word of God has so much to say about this. And I'd like to quickly go to 1 Samuel 30 real fast and show you what David did to recover. Do you, would, would you like to recover? Yes. Saints, would you like to see a recovery? Yes. All right. The moment tragedy hit, the Bible says, 1 Samuel 30 verse 4, then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Think about getting so depressed, oh, so tormented till you run out of tears. And David's two wives were taken captives. Of course, it goes on and talks about his children. And then it says this. And David was greatly distressed, verse 6, for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his son's and for his daughters, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Yes. There are times there's nobody to go to and say, help me. There are times there's nobody to be found around. They, they all want to, want to stone you. Your best friends want to kill you. That's right. You've been there, haven't you? Amen. The only one to go to us at such moments is the Lord. Right. Look, do you know, that, you know who those people were that wanted to stone him? The same people he helped when they were in trouble. Yes. Because the Bible says they were all in debt, owed money to the king, and on and on and on. Who helped them? David. Who blessed them? David. Who was there for them? David. David. Now when David needed help, they were about to kill him. Mm. Because their own problems were so great, they couldn't, they couldn't care for David anymore. David had to turn to God. My friend... That's what happened to me in that car. I said, Lord, are you there? Yeah. And he came through. The first thing you must do when these things strike is praise God in the midst of it. Yeah. Because that releases faith. The second you start praising the Lord, faith comes alive. Because I'll tell you right now, you can't praise Him if faith isn't there. Amen. The Holy Spirit walks in and imparts supernatural faith when you praise God and you are hurting so bad you can't even think right. We've all gone through that. And believe me, I speak from experience. The second thing that, that he did, it says, And David said to Abiathar, verse 7, the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the effort to David. He called for the priest to come and agree with him. He was about to seek God. He said, look, agree with me. The only person he could rely on was a man who knew God. Now, please hear this. Agreement does not not work if you agree with someone who knows nothing about the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. nothing about the voice of God, yeah. nothing on how to pray and touch heaven. Don't agree with a dead branch. Here, here, There's here. nothing to give you. Amen. You must find somebody who knows God, someone who hears from heaven, someone who serves the Lord. David didn't go and sought his brother. He didn't look for his father, even though his own brothers were there. <laughs> he sought the priest who had, heard, who had been hearing God. 
the priest who knew the anointing, the priest who knew how to call on God. Sometimes the greatest thing you, you, you can do is seek for a man of God that can help you. Paul, I've seen the power of agreement, I'm telling you. Do you remember Jesus in the garden? When he, when, 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 when he was himself distressed, who did he ask? Pray with me. Peter. He said, could you not tarry with me an hour? And, but Peter wasn't there for him. If Jesus needed somebody to help him pray, how much more do we need somebody? The Son of God needed somebody to pray with him in his darkest moment. We often can't find anyone because, hey, if the Lord could not find Peter to be, to even stay awake long enough, I know what Steve Brock is doing right now. <laughs> Steve Brock just got a pad. He's going to write my sermon down. And yes, preach it. Preach He's going to preach it and sell the tapes. Yes, <laughs> and I let him too. I see now the first, first part of that was praise the Lord. Is that right? <laughs> yes. When you're in trouble. Praise the Lord. The first thing you got to do, agree. Steve Brock, you can go praise preach it now. All right. First Samuel 30. You got to <laughs> praise God in the midst of difficulty. That's the first thing. The second thing is, find someone who can agree with you in prayer. David looked for, looked for the priest. My God, I remember the days in that horrible year. I could find nobody. Mm -hmm. I looked for them, couldn't, could not find them. Even, and please, I, I, I hope you don't misunderstand. There are times even your wife doesn't know how to pray with you. That's right. Because right. she's not there where you are. Times your husband don't know where you are. He, he comes home, he's tired, he don't want to hear anything. <laughs> we all go through that. Find somebody, somebody who will truly agree with you in the spirit. It's not, yes, Lord, I agree. Uh, don't, don't mean a thing. Find somebody who can really agree with you in the Holy Ghost, that can feel that pain in your heart and take you to God, pray with you. And listen, God will help you find that somebody, I promise you. Thirdly, look what else he did. Oh, uh, you know, um, let me just uh, quickly take you. Uh, Steve Brock, do you, do, you, do you have a Bible? No, sir. No, uh, would you get, get a Bible? Help me preach since you're going to preach this for me, for goodness yes, sake. Sir. Mm -hmm. uh, turn to uh, Proverbs 27:12 and read for us Proverbs 27:12, And then Job 28, 7, 8, 8 and 9. I want to I say something about this. Proverbs 27, 12. Are you, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, now, how long, do we, how long do we have, Paul? Another 50 minutes. Oh, great, great. Okay. Would you, sir, please? A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. The simple pass on and are punished. That's incredible. A wise man sees evil and hides himself. In other words, when that man sees the evil coming... He gets in prayer. But the foolish doesn't do it and is punished. Mm. God will allow you to see the evil before it ever hits you. If you won't pray, you, you'll, you'll be punished. Read that again. Oh, I lift it. Wow. Proverbs 27, 12. A Pru wise man, go ahead again. A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. The simple pass on and are punished. Yeah. In other words, when God lets you see the evil, if you won't pray it out, it'll come your way. Do you know how God sometimes will, will, will uh, let this happen? Through dreams? Um, why don't you all go with me to Job real quickly. Come on. There, uh, uh, this, is, this is one of the most amazing uh, things, Paul. Our God is, is quite, uh, well, He is really amazing. Uh, really, I mean, uh, sometimes I've said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I, I, I cannot believe that you are, well, let me just find that scripture real fast for you in Job. But this talks about how God will at times uh, uh, come to us. Listen to this. Job. Uh, Job 36. Hmm. 
Let me just, uh, just read beginning at verse 5. Behold, God is mighty and despiseth not any. He is mighty in strength and wisdom. He preserveth not the life of the wicked, but giveth right to the poor. He withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous, but with kings are they on the throne. Yea, he doth establish them forever, and they are exalted. Now watch this. And if they be bound in fetters and beholden in cords of affliction, then he showeth them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. He openeth also their ear to discipline and commandeth them that they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they'll spend their days in prosperity, years in pleasure. If they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. God goes on to declare in his word that he will at times come to us in dreams to warn us. Job 33, verse 14. This is powerful. And some of you saints have probably had a dream that you, you ignored and didn't pray it away from your life. Listen to this. For God, this is Job 33, 14. For God speaketh once, yea, twice. Yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon man, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Mm -hmm. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. God will sometimes come in a dream and a vision to warn you of mm -hmm. a coming danger. Mm -hmm. If you do not heed that warning, and you, now if, if, if you re keep reading, you'll see what happens to such people. It says, he's chastened also with pain upon his bed, because he didn't listen. And the multitude of his bones with strong pain, so that his life abhorreth bread, and his soul dainty meat. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen, mm. and his bones that were not seen stick out. Mm. In other words, what begins to happen because this man ignores God's warning that he gave him through a dream, he's punished. Right. You just read that. Right. A wise man sees evil and prays, right. but a simple or a foolish man doesn't pray, lets it pass on, and is punished. Mm -hmm. uh, let me show you Job 28. This is, this is incredible. Turn to Job 28. Saints, unless we focus in prayer on these needs we have, I'm telling you, what, what I'm, I feel the anointing telling you this. Amen. Unless you focus your prayer on that problem, and God in mercy will give you a dream or a vision to show you it's coming, and wants you to pray to prevent it. Don't forget Job 33, beginning at verse 14. You can read this again when you, when, you know, after we're off the air or after this program is off. This is just, just, you know, just, just take it down. Job 33, beginning actually at verse 12 and just keep going. And that is a powerful verse, a powerful portion. But look what it says in Job 28, verse 7. There is a path which no fowl knoweth, and which the vulture's eye hath not seen. The lion's whelps have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. God says in his word, there is a place no devil can get in. Yes. There is a place no vulture's eye, no demonic powers has, have, has seen, no lion, the devil, hasn't been in. There is a place of, of, of protection. Now keep listening. He putteth, he putteth forth his hand upon the rock. He overturneth the mountains by the roots. He cutteth out rivers among the rocks. And his eyes, and his eye seeth every precious thing. And I love this. Mm. He bindeth the floods mm. from overflowing. And the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. Mm. What this says is, there's a place God wants to bring you in 
that no vulture's eye has seen. Hallelujah. No demon has ever entered. Praise no, glory. No devil can enter. And Amen. if you enter into it, the Bible says God will put his hand upon a rock and will overturn mountains for you. God will, will cut out a way so that rivers will come to bless your life. Then the Bible says God will bind the floods from overflowing in your life. And that which is hid, in other words, the answer you did not have, he'll bring forth the light. Where is this place? Prayer. <laughs> prayer. Ah. The place of prayer. There's a place no foul knows. There's a place no devil can enter in. The, the place where God is. Saints, you've got to hear this. David prayed. He didn't go to the world and say, help me. He prayed. Yes. He encouraged himself in the, in, in the Lord, and then he prayed. Mm. But because he was in such desperate need, and this is when we need, we need agreement. The times we need agreement is the times when we are in the pit. Oh, yes. Most times, we can handle this thing on our own. But when the thing gets so dark, where you can't breathe. You know what the Bible, uh, uh, there, there's a portion, uh, I think it's Psalm 119, the last verse. It says, well, let me just read this. How many of you saints have ever had, had a time when you could not seek God? <laughs> Come on. You, 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 you were so worn out, oh. so beaten, you could not pray. Anybody here? Yes. Okay. David had that happen to him. Look, look what, 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 what it says. This is powerful. Uh, verse 176 of Psalm 119. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. David was saying to God, Lord, I can't seek you. I am tired. I am weary. I am beaten. Please, Lord, seek me. Seek me. Oh, yes, 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 yes. There are, there, there are times when you are so low, you don't know what to say in prayer. Right. And all you can say is, Lord, I can't find you. Would you please find me? Amen. Been there. Anybody's been there? Oh, amen. Lord, amen. That's where David was when he said, come on, help me pray. Yes. Okay, the third thing he did is right here, verse 10. And David pursued his enemies. You cannot pursue the enemy, saints, unless you've asked God for counsel, unless you've prayed and broken through in prayer. Do not just pray. Wait on God till He gives you instructions. Mm -hmm. Because if you pray without, you are going into warfare blinded. That's a dangerous thing to do. Paul, I have gained respect for the devil. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I know I've just gotten some eye, some eyebrows raised here. So I understand. <clears throat> Paul, we fight against a fierce and a mighty enemy. Oh, yes. We have mocked a being that angels fear. It took the Son of God to defeat him. For no angel could. Right. Amen. His fierce hatred, his incredible strength. Paul, I have faced that enemy in a real way. I know. I'm not talking just about attacks here and there. Saints, I deal with I deal with the supernatural. I know you see me on television, and you don't know what happens when, when, when I'm alone. Because if I should tell you what I see in the Spirit, you, you think he's crazy. But I can tell you this. And, I, and there's things I'll never share because I honestly think uh, they, they'll never be received. But I'll tell, you, I'll, I'll tell you this. You cannot get to where I am in the Spirit and see these miracles if my experience experience has been shallow. I've had, I've, I've had deep times with God. But at the same time, I have had some visits from the devil. Of course. 
Paul, he appeared to me. Really? Yes, sir. So much so that my body froze in an icy atmosphere where I could not talk. It was as though every part of my being froze and could not move. The only thing that I could say in the depth of my being is Jesus. He came to kill me. What was the circumstance? The circumstance, Paul, was... See, Satan knows the damage we're doing to his kingdom. The, the, I, I, I don't want to say too much because I'm, I know somebody's watching that could use this against me, but just believe me when I tell you, it was a moment in my life recently when had it not been for the power of the Spirit, had, had it not been for the Holy Ghost, I would have been dead. Benny, yes, sir. That's Absolutely. serious. That's serious. Physically, I would, have, I, I would have died that moment. Jesus. I, uh, l l let, me, let me help you understand this. The devil's presence is the presence of death. Yes. Yes. His presence doesn't bring life. When I saw him, everything in me died except my spirit. My body, hmm. everything in me came to a it, it, it froze because he came to destroy me. Of course. Now, this was at a time when all kinds of things were happening. I cannot go into details, because, except to tell you this. I have gained respect. I understand now why Michael the archangel did not rebuke him, but said, the Lord rebuked thee. We often say things about Satan, not knowing really who he is. I have news for you. <laughs> My eyes have opened. I don't play games with him. I know in whom I can hide. Yes. Amen. Paul, if it wasn't for the presence of the Holy Spirit, we would all be dead. That's right. True. We take, we take his presence so lightly. For granted. But God can reveal and open your eyes to things in the Spirit. Uh, Steve, you've been with me the last month. Right. You've seen some of the things that happened like in Australia. Right. And just a few days ago in Tulsa. Right. You were not with me in Tulsa. I was just there a few days ago. Right. The Lord is beginning to show me things about people that are frightening not only me but the, but the audience. Like what? Like, like details about their sickness. Uh, Steve would say, uh, so and so is healed of this. I say, yeah, but they also have that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, a lady came up in Australia. I saw a snake on, on her arm. I saw it. It, uh, we, we saw the thing on TV. How many, how many, how many, how many saw, saw it? I saw it. And her skin was, was, was like, a, like, a, like rotting. Right. But nobody saw it because it was covered with a, her, 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 her dress. I had something happen to me in Australia and in Tulsa. And I've had to apologize to God publicly for saying things about William Branham. <laughs> William Branham used to minister under an, an anointing where, where he would look at somebody and say, uh, your doctor's name is such and such, your sickness is this and that, and he'd, he would give them mm -hmm. their history. Mm -hmm. yes. And about half an hour later, he would be carried out physically because he'd be drained. So I would say publicly, I've said this, without mentioning his name. I'd say, when the Holy Ghost is on you, he energizes you. I've said publicly, and you've heard me, that I'm stronger after the service than, than before. It's true when it comes to the anointing that works with me in the meetings. But twice now, the gift of the word of knowledge has operated with me in a, in a fashion where I would see people's uh, sickness before they would tell me. And I would see animals that, that, that on their body. I, I would see spiders, I would see snakes, I'd see frogs. 
that I know people think that, you know, I don't really care what you think. That's right. Amen. Uh, Amen. Those are demon spirits. De okay. yes. Demon spirits. Because, don't care what yeah. they think. That's and, and Paul, in Australia, I nearly collapsed on the platform physically. Right. right. I, because when that gift be began to operate, I felt energy leave me. I've ha I publicly, I apologized to God that night, and you were there. Mm -hmm. Because I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I did not, I did not understand that gift and how it operates. All those things began happening after that experience. Mm -hmm. The devil knows a lot more than we think he knows. Oh, yes. He, he knows what God is planning way more than you think. We think he's blinded to what God is about to do. He's not. Somehow he knows. I don't know how, but he knows. And when these things began to happen, what, what, what I would see people's sickness before they would come on me, uh, before, before they, they would tell me. The Lord spoke to me that same week in San Antonio and said this to me. He said, I want you to begin praying in tongues continually. You know, I mean, I pray in tongues like most Christians do when the Spirit of God moves on me. Well, and, and the Lord said to me, he said, I want you to pray in tongues every morning. I want you to pray in tongues during the day. He said, when you, and, and here's, I mean, I heard these words. He's, he said, if you'll pray in tongues in the morning, I'll give you revelations in the evening. Mm. Yes, sir. Interesting. Mm. And, and as I've been practicing this, that is what began happening. Mm -hmm. In Tulsa, Sunday night, I was there at the Word Explosion meeting. And those who are watching, if they were there, they, saw, they, they, they know what I'm talking about. Before they would tell me so-and-so was healed off, I'd say, just a second, I could see it on him. David, you were there. But you see, those things are happening now because there's a deeper dimension. The devil knew it, Paul. He had to. The devil knew it. He tried to take you out. He tried to take him out before that thing could, could happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But he lost again. Good. Sure. Amen. But let me just say one more thing. If you have not been to one of our crusades lately, show up quick. Yeah, you better. You better. You know, here in Anaheim, the manager of the pond changed a rock concert so we can be there. Do you know what has happened lately? We've had three stadiums call us. We didn't call them. They called us. One of them was in Tacoma, Washington. These people remember when we were there, the managers are calling and saying, please come back, we need you. Really? Yes, sir. Well. The, because, see, we, we, when, when we would be there and they'd see the, the you know, power of God, then they have all these crazy things happening after we leave with wrestling matches and rock concerts and they see the different crowd. They're wanting some decent people to come back. <laughs> Don't blame them. But do you know, God has opened these Stadiums now, like the, the, you know, pond. Do you know something, Saints, here in Southern Cal? We have wanted to come back for a crusade here for months. Nothing was open. We called and nothing. Now the manager says, I'll change this thing. He told us, he said, I, we want Benny Hinn back. We'll change the rock concert. I don't think it's happening just because it's happening. God yes. is going to do something Amen. in yes. the pond. Yes, yes, yes. Let's, let's go. How many does that seat? 20,000. 20,000. That's right here in Anaheim, isn't it? Right in Anaheim. Don't miss it. October 8th and 9th. You in, in, come from all over. But the thing, Paul, is, and, and, and I want to get back to this now, but the thing is we have gotten away from praying in the Spirit. Do you know when you pray in English? <laughs> okay. I'll tell him, Lord. In my, please, you know, tell me how much time I have because if I keep going, I'll keep going till, till midnight. Just uh, come, uh, come, come around this 25 way. 25 minutes. Yeah. 30 minutes. 30 and, and you got to bring it close because I can't see that far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll keep you up to date. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. I'll help you. I'll, I'll read it for you. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> I have my glasses. But now listen, saints. I, in prayer recently, I saw, I saw something. I saw a demon listening to me pray. 
And when he would hear me pray, he would plan against my prayer. Wow. I saw it. In the Spirit, I saw it. And suddenly the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, when you pray in English, they plan against it. Hear that. This but if good. you pray in tongues, they can't. They you're praying they can't. mysteries, and they can't. Woo! Whoa. No. All right. Yes, Lord. They can't. Do you know why? Do you know why you can pray in English for a year or two or three for something that just doesn't happen? I saw something when I had that experience. It's not because God isn't answering. It's because demons are causing Stop. the delay, stopping wow. it. Do you remember what happened to Daniel the, the prophet? Yes. Right. Right. 21 days. God responded that day. But the evil spirit held it back till the archangel had to fight his way through. We believers don't realize the war that's going on around us when, when we pray. People, I'm telling you, uh, honestly, lift your hands and pray Thank a second. Come on. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Pray in the Spirit, will you? Thank Cheryl, you. get good on that Lord instrument. My, my. Everybody pray in the Spirit. You in your homes pray. Something is about to happen here. Oh, my God, I feel the anointing here. <laughs> People pray in the Lord. Come on, lift your hands in your home. Pray in the Spirit. I believe God is showing you things. Malbe kele faith. Yelbe mintil al metro polo luku mante. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Pick up your instrument, Cheryl, please. Alpha, Paul, Al Cap, Alpha, Martin, Al Man. Jesus, I, it, it, something is happening, Steve. Thank you, Jesus. Something is happening, Steve. God Almighty wants wants to do something, man. Amen. Yes, Lord, thank you. Excuse me. Dear Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, thank you for the anointing. Our Lord, release it on him in Jesus' pr 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 precious name. God is going to use him in just a second. Oh, hallelujah. Listen to me just for five, five, just five minutes. Five minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, God is, 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 is doing something now. There, there, something is happening here. Listen to me. When I saw that the demons of hell are delaying an answer, that God is not the one holding it back. He's not the one who's not listening. He's not the one who's not answering. Because we have not prayed in the Spirit, Satan has used your prayer against you. Because he's, you see, the devil is, is not all-knowing. He's not all, uh, he, 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 he's not omnipotent or omniscient. But every believer must know this. And if you think I'm crazy, well, that's your, your, your problem. <laughs> but every believer has demons assigned oh, I'm sure of it. to that believer to destroy them and report on their activity to His Majesty. Yes. If you should see the plan of hell against you, you, you would not want to. Ever since that day, Paul, I have prayed a prayer almost every day. And I pray to God, He'll, he'll, he'll grab you now so you can, you, you can pray. From the day I saw this thing where demons were fighting what I prayed for, they were planning against everything I asked. I, I began praying, oh Lord, destroy Satan's plan for my life and establish your plan for my life. Amen, amen, amen. I believe now God Almighty wants me to pray this prayer for you. Come on, stretch your hands to heaven. All, all of it. Everybody pray. Would you all say after me, Father, Father in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
Destroy Satan's plan. Destroy, Destroy Satan's, Satan's plan. plan. For my life. For, For my, my life. life. My home. My home. My, home. my family. My, my family. family. My loved ones. My loved ones. My, loved ones. my future. My, my future. future. And establish your plan. And establish your, your plan. plan. For my life. For my life. My home. My home. My family. My family. My children. My children. And my future. And my future. And their future. And their future. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. My God, I feel the anointing here. Now, now, listen, listen, listen. You cannot pursue the enemy in the flesh. David pursued the enemy after prayer in the spirit. The effort deals with revelation prayer. Yes. yes. He called for the effort. Most don't even know what the effort, what the effort is. The effort dealt with revelation. Yes. yes. You can't pray in English. You gotta sometimes pray in the spirit. Do you understand this? Paul said praying all prayer in the spirit. And in the, in the spirit doesn't only mean in tongues. In the spirit means we're literally heart to heart. The Holy Ghost praying with groanings that can't be uttered. And as you get in the spirit, only then can you pursue the enemy. And now David, the Bible says, did, did something else. He penetrated the camp yes. when the enemy wasn't watching. My brother, only those walking in the spirit can penetrate the enemy's camp. Amen. There is nowhere in the Bible, Paul, where it says we believers ought to stay in, uh, behind some bush hiding from the devils around us. David pursued and penetrated. Yes. Amen. My God, yes, I feel yes, that on yes. 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 All because he prayed. And after he penetrated in verse 16, then he recovered all in verse 18 and 19. Now, saints, it's time we do these things. It's time we begin praising God in the midst of this trial. It's time we agree with somebody who knows God for our needs to be met. It's time we pursue the, the, the enemy in prayer. We focus on the things that have been lost or stolen. Focus on those things that the devil has brought against you and pray in the spirit. Don't pray in English. Say, Lord, you know what I'm saying. The Holy Ghost is praying through me. Yes. Yes. And then penetrate that camp when the enemy isn't watching. And here's how we penetrate the camp. Please listen to this. It is impossible to penetrate the enemy's camp. It's impossible to penetrate the enemy's camp in the flesh. Mm -hmm. No amount of flesh struggle will do it. You penetrate the camp of the enemy with worship. The presence of God will descend on you and everything that the enemy has starts to crumble. The presence of God destroys that. And then recovery comes. Now, I want every one of you to lift your hands and I want everybody here to stand up and we're going to pray. Come on. And then, Paul, I want to lay hands on these yes. pledges yes, yes. because this is the moment to do it in. And the prayer requests. Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Now, people, would you all in your homes and right here lift your voices and pray in the Holy Ghost? Come on. Cheryl, lift your instrument, please, my dear. Now, I want you to, to play it for me. We are standing on holy ground. Jesus, I give you praise. You in your homes, just lift your voice to God. Lift your voice to God, saints. Lift your voice to God. Lord, my God, bring your people out of that bondage they're in. Lord Jesus, bring them out of that miserable bondage they're in. Lord Jesus, bring them out of that bondage of sin, bondage of disease bandage of oppression, bandage of depression. Bring your people out, Lord. And give them eyes to see, Lord, and ears to hear, Lord. And they might pray according to your will, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Lord. Now listen to me, saints. God Almighty will take the veil off of your eyes 
if you will begin to pray in the Spirit, in the Spirit. Now, I'm going to walk over there, Paul, with you and Jan and Steve. We're going to lay our hands on these. And while we do, everybody pray in the Spirit. Come on. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your hands and pray. Jesus, we give you praise. Malbukal, Alfa, Pialbi, Mante. Dear Lord, thank God the anointing is here, Paul. Dear Jesus, your people have sowed in faith. And you said, Lord, that if we sow, we shall reap. And now, dearest Master, we lay our hands in faith, knowing your plan for your people. Destroy the enemy's plan for the finances. And bring your plan in Jesus' name into their life and finance. Lord my God, release your people from that chain of debt and bring them out, Lord, into liberty. In the name of Jesus, we speak the word of deliverance and healing in the name of Jesus. Let's go pray for these, Paul. Would you please, saints, just hallelujah, Cheryl. Just, just sing it, will you? All of you just sing that beautiful song. Lord, my God, in Jesus' name, heal your people, Lord. 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 Lord, heal your people in Jesus' name. Heal your people, Lord. Heal your people, Lord. Heal your people. Lord, remove that blood pressure. In the name of Jesus, remove that blood pressure. I rebuke, my God, I feel anointing. I rebuke it in the name of the Lord, my Redeemer. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help, 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 Jenna. God is giving a, giving a word, Steve. Release it in the name of the Lord, my God. Speak it out, my brother. Mambekish underebe ya to 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 di via soto re re ba ya ras. Fondete pa 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 po ropo su po ropo curete. This enemy that has come against you will be destroyed, saith the Lord. The healing is coming to pass in your body even now. For my anointing is upon you even greater than you have ever known it. Marete, and my touch is upon you, and my strength is in your body. And I have made you whole from this moment on, saith the Lord. Believe on me and trust in me and walk in faith. Ah, whoa! For I want to make known even greater things in your heart and in your life. And I want to release even greater things in you and in Paul. For my spirit is upon Paul as never before. <laughs> Strength that he has lacked, the strength is coming forth. The foes of hell that have sought to destroy, that foe has been defeated by the might of the angels of glory and by the words of my own hand and the works of my own hand and the words of my own mouth. For they have come forth and I have spoken the commandments, saith the Lord Jesus. In Jesus. Saints, uh, I, 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 Joe, Joe and Hans, quickly, come on. Join hands quickly. Join hands right here and in your homes. Lift your hands to heaven. Lift, 
Joe and Hans right here. Come on, quick. Lord Jesus. Release, Lord, your, your anointing upon the people. Here in their homes. My God, people, just lift your hands and drink it in. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Even greater things are flowing into. Oh, oh, even greater things are flowing into your body and into your spirit. Hear me, saith the Lord, I desire to do even as I have done with my servant men. I desire to make revelation known to you, even greater than you've ever known it before. I desire to speak truth in you as you have never known before. I desire to break every chain of bondage that the enemy has sought to bring upon you. He is defeated, saith the Lord. He is destroyed, saith the Lord. And I speak, to, I speak to my people. I speak to those that are watching even now. I speak to those that are hearing even now. No enemy shall destroy you. No foe that has raised his ugly head before you will defeat you. Andre ba prete. Have no fear. Hear the words of the mouth that have, the words that have fallen from the lips of my servant, for they are my words. Pray unto me and seek my face as never before, for I desire to take you from this level to the next. I desire to reveal my strength in your body. And to take away the enemies that have sought to kill your children and sought to bring your home asunder and sought to bring financial ruin in your life. For my Rebecca Posuta, for my spirit beyond the push. Great, great is my anointing that is flowing before you now. Have no doubt, but seek me. And see what I desire to accomplish in your life. But greater, 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 greater do I desire to pour out upon you my spirit. For it is my spirit that brings you to the forefront. And it is my spirit that tramples the snakes of demons under thy feet. It is my spirit. Hear me, Savior. Now, saints, be before we say good before we say goodbye listen i want to pray that god almighty will open your eyes to see revelation now lift your your hands and ask for it say father you promised to give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation dear jesus i receive it now Open my eyes to see and ears to hear the things of the Spirit. In your name, amen. How much time do we have? Do you have time to sing a song? Listen, listen, Paul. God is doing some amazing things here. Do you, do you know, do you know, there is a there is a new atmosphere invading the church if you will do what we said tonight if you'll begin to pray in the spirit more than you've ever had before there you are if you've been if 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 you'll begin to pray in the spirit pray more in the spirit than you've ever in your life god will bring you into a new dimension that can transform your walk. You will know things about your children 
about your family, about your future. Saints, God has probably come to you through dreams trying to warn you of coming dangers. You've done nothing about it. You better get to prayer and stop those things. Now, Paul, I have never sensed an atmosphere like this. I've sensed the anointing. I'm talking about here on TBN. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it is different. I've sensed the anointing before here for healing. But sensing an atmosphere like this is quite unusual. You are right, Steve. There is deliverance. Now, Lord, deliver your people from the spirit of blindness. Deliver your people from the spirit of slumber. Deliver your people from the spirit of confusion. Deliver your people from the spirit of the world. And deliver your people from the spirit that has given, that has given them that wrong satanic vision. Give them your vision. In Jesus' name, amen. And I pray this prayer. Go, go and, and, and get, get yourself ready, Steve. You're, you're, you're already. Uh, people, get yourself ready for the Lord to do new, new things now with you in your walk as you begin to pray in the Spirit. Trust me, I'm telling you what I know from God. Thank you, Paul. Oh. And let's all turn out at the pond, October 8 and 9, 20,000 seats. And before that, I'll be in St. Louis next week at the Kiel Auditorium, Tw another 20,000, 20, that's going to be a fantastic one. Then Birmingham, Alabama is in, sept is in September, and then October is here. And, and to my, uh, Anaheim, right here, my dear. Jen and I'll be in Anaheim. I will oh. be in Anaheim. That's it. Love you. Do what we told you tonight. Tell Benny Hinn we really love him and appreciate his ministry in the spirit tonight. The song, as we say goodnight, simply says his name. Oh, yes, it is life. Worship him. Worship Him. Don't leave this atmosphere. Worship Him. Some name to teach her. A man with a purpose. Some say he was just history. Worship Him right in your home. This anointing that's flowing so strongly is flowing right where you are. If you ever realize there's healing that's flowing upon you even now. There's touch. There's this touch. Just receive it. Thank God for what's flown flowed through us here in this service. Master, he's master. Savior, he's lion of Judah. He's your blessed prince of peace say this with me he's my shepherd he's my fortress say my rock of salvation lamb of god lamb of god he's he Light. You're struggling in darkness. He's bringing light to you right now. Some name Tim 
devil because of his power. You see, they just could not understand. Drink in the anointing, ladies and gentlemen. It's still flowing through the audience, into the camera. Demon, they just would not accept it as more than just a man. But say it with me. His name is Master. Say he's my Savior. Lion. He's your shepherd, he's your fortress, your rock of salvation. Right now, right this moment, Lamb of God is here. healing that's flowing in this audience right now. God is delivering you. Just reach up and receive it. Reach up and receive it. Come on. There it is. It's yours right now. His name is. He's your master. He's your healer. He's your lion of Judah. He's your blessed prince. He's your fortress, your rock of salvation, the Lamb of God is He. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.